myself Chaitali. I am the host for today's session AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. So let's start with the session. Before that, let's have a small introduction about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution, which helps any industry to get their relevant technology solutions, which will be keep you on the top of the competition. We are not only restricted to group trainings, but also our Microsoft certification trainings helps every individual professional to be succeeded in the competitive world. Here are some of our master solution offered by Synergetics, onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification, certification plus add-on, cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training, emerging technology training. Today's session is organized by ATC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ATC community is open for all the people who are interested in Microsoft cloud technologies. You just need to follow our meetup groups, which are emerging technology community for all. Azure Tech Community Pune for Pune Kurs, Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs, Azure Tech Community Gujarat for Gujarati Tech, and AI on Microsoft Platform Community for all those who are interested in AI. You just need to install Meetup app on your phone and follow our communities, so you will get updated about our upcoming event, meetups, uh, webinars, and workshops. Now, small code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note that you can't take screenshot of the presentation and can't do screen recording. To get the recording of the session, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. The channel link will be posted in the chat box later. Now, agenda for the session. Identity. Identify the benefit and consideration of using cloud services. Describe the difference between categories of cloud services and more. Today's speaker for the session is Mr. Chandrasekhar Deshpande. Chandrasekhar sir is working in tech corporate industry for more than 30 years. His core experience is in data related technologies. He is a Microsoft certified trainer. He had worked with many fortune companies like Essentia, Infosys, Sintel and many more. And delivered the great knowledgeable session on today's highly demanded technologies like big data, analytics, machine learning, Azure and Hadoop. Now special announcement to do. Next slide. Yes, as you can see on the screen, we are providing you with the exam voucher for AZ 900 on discounted rate that is for 2400. If you want to purchase, you can connect us on our mail ID. I will be sharing our official mail ID with you all. Also, each attendee will be provided with the free MOC Microsoft official curriculum for AZ 900 over the email IDs. For that, you just have to fill out the MOC activation form. The form will be provided in the chat box later. Please note that we will be sharing MOC activation form in the chat box that you have to fill out to receive the MOC for AZ 900. Now we can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skills with Microsoft various certification. You can enroll for any of these training programs with Synergetics where you will be experiencing live interactive session with the best MCTs. Trust us and we will deliver the best. Next slide. As you can see on the screen, our next ETT session will be on 1st of June, which is on topic build modern app with .NET 6. Registration link will be provided in the chat box. Next slide. Also, we are having Saturday webinar on 21st of June for four hours. Topic will be DP203 data engineering on Microsoft Azure. Next slide. Also, do follow us on our social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for getting updated about our upcoming webinars and workshops. 
now i would like to hand over the mic to chandrashekar sir so he can go ahead with the session thanks to all thanks shetali <coughs> and chandrashekar as all the chaitanya already told since long i am in uh, uh, training the uh, profession before that i was in development this is a session we are planning for four hours on z900 which are nothing but azure fundamentals uh, i am sharing my screen would like to know whether the screen is reaching to you so just a minute Let me know when screen reaches to you. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, thanks. So first of all, we will try to understand the pattern for the examination. So whenever we will go through, you know, overview of the curriculum or important topics in the curriculum. Uh, behind the uh, uh, behind your brain, you will always keep thinking of. What kind of questions may be asked in the examination? So, overall curriculum has been divided into uh, six modules, out of which you know the first module is most important. I will rate second module also most important in the sense that uh, you know these two modules cover a major part of the curriculum. Uh, and these two modules are important in the sense that they uh, they cover from such a fundamental concepts, okay, so that you will find rest of the modules easy to understand. Module one, describe a uh, cloud concept. It, uh, you know, it's a weightage is around 20 to 25 uh, percent in the uh, examination. These are three major topics and until and unless you understand what exactly IAAS, PAAS and SAAS, not good, it's not good to go um, for any other topic. These are all fundamental concepts. Module two talks about uh, different uh, services as well as some of the concepts like what are regions, region pairs, zones, resource groups. It also covers some of the uh, major uh, services available on the cloud. So we will see a couple of major services there. So it carries around 15 to 20 percent uh, of the weightage. So both these modules are, you know, covering around 35 to 40 percent of weightage. I will not say this is sufficient, but yes, these are important in the sense that, you know, they cover all basic concepts needed for rest of the modules. Module three. Describe core solutions and management tools on Azure. So in case if we can add its weightage also, so it uh, its a coverage goes beyond 50 uh, to 55%. Again, here we are covering, uh, you know, major, uh, some of the important uh, category wise services on the Azure. Then what are all different Azure management tools? So that also we will see. Then we begin with the security and the network uh, security features. Uh, so what exactly security center is? What is defender services? What are all uh, sticky walls, sentinel uh, like services? So all those things are being covered here in module four. Again, I repeat, so this is a fundamental examination. I mean to say this is a fundamental certification. So one point to be noted is that not uh, every uh, point here to be digged much. OK, you should have a knowledge uh, overview knowledge of every topic here. So instead of in a deep knowledge, you should have wider knowledge as much as you can. Identity and governance. So what are all different uh, um, services and tools available there for the purpose of the identity and governance? So it also uh, carries a good weightage 15 to 20 percent. Uh, then comes uh, cost management and service level agreements. So that also covers 10 to 15 percent. The whole curriculum has been divided into six modules. OK, and uh, uh, what exactly examination pattern is that also interesting to look at? All in, uh, questions are MCQ type, either single choice or multiple choices. 
whenever there are multiple choices for in the question, they specifically mention it. They specifically mention that you will have uh, this question has multiple answers. Also, in case if it is a single choice, you will see radio buttons there. And in case if it is of multiple choice, you will see check buttons there. So from there also you can re realize whether it is of the single or multiple choice. Multiple choice question certainly carries multifold weightage. Not all questions will have same weightage. That is that is a point to be noted. Huh? Some questions will have larger weightage. Some questions will have uh, less weightage. No negative marking. That is extremely important point to be noted that in examination there is no negative marking. That's why try to attempt each and every question. Whenever you are not pretty really sure about the question, OK, there is always a checkbox given uh, at the top of every question whether you want to mark that uh, that question to review later. So you can check that box. To review that question later or to correct the answer, it allows you to correct the answer also later. Total examination duration is of 90. Uh, sorry, total passing score is 700 out of 1000. Again, I repeat, not every question will have uh, same weightage. Some of the questions will have larger while some of the questions will have less weightage. Total examination duration though is of 90 minutes. Actual examination is of 60 minutes. You will have to join the examination 15 minutes early. Actual examination of the, is of the 60 minutes and post examination you will have to stay there for 15 minutes. There will be around 50 to 60 questions. OK, and there you will get uh, time of one minute to appear for every question. Some questions are simple. They they uh, you don't spend one minute time there. OK, that extra time you can spend on other questions. And there are no case study based questions in the sense that. Every question will be. Uh, a question in itself. In case of case study, what happens? You know, they may give you one large statement and on that statement there will be 10 to 15 to 20 questions based. That is, those questions are called as a case study based questions. But no, here every question will have its explanation and will be asked you for the answer. You can appear for the examination even from the home also, but you have to have your room completely isolated whenever you are appearing for the examination. And throughout the tenure of the examination, duration of the examination, nobody can enter into the room. So you have to lock your room from inside. So your any family member by mistake must not come into the room. See, your room will be monitored by uh, proctor there. There are normally two proctors. One is in India and another is out of in, uh, uh, somewhere uh, from outside India. Both those uh, you know proctors keep monitoring the examination. And in case if Proctor suspect that something is uh, fishy going there, Proctor immediately cancels examination without waiting for any kind of explanation from you. So you have to be extremely careful while you know, uh, appearing for the examination. You are supposed to maintain 100% decorum, examination decoration, uh, decorum around you. Your audio and video must be on. So um, uh, throughout the examination, somebody must always be hearing to you and must be observing you. That is uh, for sure. Must maintain complete decorum. No second laptop around. Even if your mobile phone is also not allowed to be around you. It must be uh, away from you at arm's distance. OK, and if you are in the impression that uh, you know, as you are appearing from the examination, you will get some opportunity um, or kind of a help in the examination. Sorry to say there will be no help from even you also cannot take a help from anybody else. Schedule examination at Prometric Center that is possible, but then it comes with a limited hours and that, that too. Uh, only noon hours are uh, being allowed by many Prometric Centers. So you have to may uh, you have to you know take a leave or a break from your company to appear for the examination. Normally, examination should not be given from the office in the sense that uh, you know office uh, server may block communication through firewall rules. 
So it had been recommended that neither you should use office laptop nor should you be you are appearing for the examination from office network. In India, Pearson's view conduct examination through Prometric centers. OK, these are the URLs. Let me share them uh, in the chat box so you can come to know more about. The uh, study pages, uh, sorry, curriculum as well as more about the examination. <clears throat> And here is a material available so that also you can refer. This is online material. In addition to this, uh, uh, most of the portion of the curriculum I am covering in this discussion, that is one thing. And second thing is, uh, as Shaitali already mentioned, that uh, you know MOC will be shared with you. OK, so having said that, where I just explained you what kind of examination uh, is carried out. So I repeat again, it will be only MCQ based examination, no practical examination and no descriptive examination. So that point everybody. Uh, please. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, I'm unable to. To view chat box actually. I will share these URLs to Chaitali. OK, uh, so let's expect from her to do the needful. OK, it's showing some no longer access. You can refresh your screen. That may be uh, that may work. Yes, all uh, URLs that I may be sharing in this uh, discussion will be shared in one go with you. May I know who is there? Uh, whom uh, does not have access to uh, chat box? Yeah, my name is Ashok Sahu. Ashok Rahul. Ashok Sahu. Yes. yes. Ashok Sahu. Okay, I will uh, request uh, Chaitali to share the URLs with you. Sure, sure. Thank you. So uh, let us uh, uh, begin with a technical discussion. I will be uh, you know, taking an overview of uh, uh, module uh, one. So it is based on cloud concept and it, it it covers you know some very basic but very important concepts. Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet, enabling fast innovation, flexible resources and economics of scale. So in cloud computing, you get different types of computes, different types of storages, networking, virtual networks, and different types of services which can do analytics for you. And what benefit do cloud computing gives to me? That all these services, you know, I can create just uh, on the tip of time, uh, sorry, tip of fingers. So by simply clicking here or there. You know, even big, big uh, infrastructure, hardware infrastructure uh, structure, uh, I can get within just a couple of seconds. That is uh, something great about cloud computing. But yes, there, you know, benefits of cloud computing are not limiting. We will visit many, many benefits of cloud computing as most of the organizations are preferring uh, cloud computing over on premise infrastructure. Public cloud. Though its name is public cloud, you don't misunderstand that uh, in case if you deploy your application, it will be publicly available. No, that is not the case. Public cloud basically is a uh, you know infrastructure when you are not using it, somebody else is, will use it. I am talking about infrastructure. I am not talking about application and your data. Your application and your data, you will only use. It will not be accessible to anybody else. But when you have done with your applications and data and now you are uh, you know, returning that infrastructure, somebody else can use that infrastructure. So here cloud, public cloud talks about shareable infrastructure owned by cloud service or hosting provider. So Azure or AWS, they are cloud services or hosting provider. So they will own it and they will share infrastructure only among you. OK, you can use your infrastructure for the period you need it and whenever you have done with it, 
you know, you can return that infrastructure. The moment you acquire it, it will start your billing, and the moment you return it, it will stop the billing, and you will have to pay for the period you are using it. Provides the resources and services to multiple organizations and users. So many users can work on it, and that uh, cloud can be shared among multiple organizations also. What is the best about this uh, public cloud is that whenever you are using it, it will be dedicated to you and it will charge you only for the period you are using it. OK, but whenever you are using it and whenever you are working it as a, a dedicated resource, nobody else will have an access to it until and unless you uh, offer them privilege. OK, so it is very much secured also. Access to wire secured network also. Private cloud, it is completely dedicated. It is not shared. The whole infrastructure will be dedicated for you. Whenever you are underutilizing it, still you will be charged fully. And whenever you are overutilizing it, then you will have to demand for extra resources. Organization create a cloud environment on their data center. So either this data center may be something in your premise or this data center is something you have hired from somebody. Organization is responsible for operating the services they provide. You will get infrastructure, bare infrastructure, and what all things to be installed there, what all things to be configured there, that's all uh, your responsibility. Does not provide access to users outside the organization. Yes, we can open application gateway to provide access to outside uh, environment, but otherwise, it is extremely secured uh, environment, extremely secured environment, and it is dedicated also. OK, so it incurs uh, a capital cost like something, so it is costly also. Whenever you design your application out of, uh, of which one part is working on premise and another part is, uh, I mean to say one, one part is working on private cloud and another part is working on public cloud and both the parts work with each other cohesively, then it is called as a hybrid cloud. So hybrid cloud is normally preferred in order to reduce the overall cost. Because I already told you the private network incurs so much cost, private infrastructure incurs much cost. And if you want to reduce that cost by meeting the uh, regional compliances or your compliances of your company, some part you may decide to migrate to the cloud because uh, you know, infra infrastructure in the cloud is cheaper. And thereby you can reduce the cost of the application by meeting all the regional compliances and uh, compliances of your company. <clears throat> so that is hybrid cloud. I request everybody in case if you have any question at any point of time, just inter uh, interrupt me and put forth your question. We will either discuss it immediately or we will be discussing later. Public cloud, private cloud and hybrid cloud, I already have told you. All these are the benefits of working with the cloud. High availability. What do you mean by high availability? That at any moment, if you need more resources. To reduce the latency of the responses, Within fraction of minutes, you can get more resources. For example, in the evening, web application is getting more heats. Say, hello. Keep hello. Keep. Any question? Uh, is there? Sorry. Hello, please go on the mute. Please go on the mute. Uh -huh. I was talking about scalability, right? But so that whenever there are many hits in the evening, you know, you your web application may be needing more resources and automatically. Um, uh, your application, you know, uh, uh, say becomes a scalable, uh, pulls in more resources and ensure that latency should not go up. And it uh, with the scalability by ingesting more and more resources, you know, it will keep latency uh, same. 
So that is scalability means your application or your infrastructure is automatically growing as per the demand. And whenever it realizes that whatever uh, resources it has pulled in are being underutilized, it will shrink itself. Thereby, whenever it is shrinking itself, it will reduce your bill. And whenever you are needing more resources there, okay, uh, for the period you are using those additional resources, it will uh, increase your bill. But it is as good as a pay as you go. High availability. If one data center goes down, then in case if your web application is up and running on another data center, okay, and without any interruption, even if one data center goes down, okay, without any interruption, another data center comes into play and start, uh, you know, uh, accepting the request and creating the responses, your end user will never realize that, uh, you know, one data center has gone down and uh, now uh, your responses are coming from any other data center. So that is high availability. High availability means even if one data center goes down, even if one data set is lost, still it will have a you know, copy of another data set or still it will have copy of your web application up and running in another data center. That is high availability. Fault tolerance in case if uh, there is one copy up and running all the time and uh, that is not leading it to interrupt your services even for a while, that is fault tolerance. Elasticity automatically, you know, uh, increasing the number size of the resources or shrinking the size of the resources. <coughs> there are so many benefits here of cloud that today, you know, every company uh, is a preferring. Every company is preferring it. <coughs> many, many benefits. <coughs> Capital expenditure versus operational expenditure. Capital expenditure means you are investing in hardware, space, creating a network there, creating a, uh, you know, uh, uh, alternative arrangements for the electricity, alternative arrangements for HVAC systems. That is all capital expenditure. In order to create a data center on premise, your organization may have to you know, uh, invest uh, a large amount, you know, to uh, you know, create and uh, make your data center up and ready there. Operational expenditure. Operational expenditure means not investing at the beginning, but spending on the product and services as needed. The operational expenditure does not force you to do heavy investment at the beginning. So, Azure or AWS cloud, they expect operational expenditure. It means whatever you are, uh, your bill is for the month, you will simply pay that much. That bill will include the bill for the services those are using and not the investment into infrastructure. So capital expenditure is when you create a data center on premise and operational expenditure is when you uh, hire your services from somebody else or you hire your services from cloud. Consumption based model is pay as you go. In case if you are utilizing some services for 30 minutes, in case if it calculates a bill based on 30 minutes only, that is consumption based model. So consumption based model, you know, has reduced the uh, cost uh, remarkably, dramatically. Okay, and uh, say uh, these uh, clouds are offering you consumption based model. Long ago, I remembered AWS was not offering consumption based model, but since uh, three, four years, it has started uh, offering you consumption based model. <clears throat> these are uh, so service types. So here you can see it's a uh, S uh, sorry, IAAS. Build, build, pay as you go. IT infrastructure by renting servers. It 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 offers you servers on the rent, virtual machines, storage, network, operating systems from the cloud provider. So here you can see. Whenever you are getting 
virtual machine, a bare virtual machine on the cloud, you can call it as a IAS. Whenever you are getting bare storage on the cloud, you can call it as a IAS. In that machine, you are free to decide what to install there, and you are free to uh, configure operating system there. So having a machine, bare new brand machine uh, on premise, okay, is similar to having virtual machine on the cloud. The difference is that whenever you buy the machine, you have to invest heavily, but on the cloud, you don't have to invest that much. Okay, it is consumption based model. I mean to say for the period you will use that virtual machine, it will keep up uh, adding in your bill. And the moment you shut down that machine, you know, it will stop billing you. So infrastructure as a service. Bare machines and bare storage also. Platform as a service. Here, you are not offered machines, but you are offered some service. For example, with database service. You no know, database needs a machine, but which machine you don't have to bother. You simply can request to it that you need a database. You need a Cosmos DB. You need analytic service. But whenever it is offering you that service, you know, it may have to create a storage for that service and you know, compute for that service. So it may have to create storage and compute. Agreed. But you are being offered that service only. So this is called as a pass, provides environment for building, testing, and deployment software applications without focusing on managing underlying infrastructure. How much storage it picks up, what type of compute it picks up, that you don't have to bother because they have SLA, service level agreement, that once you get a service, you know, this is what, uh, you know, they offer you uh, guaranteed response time that that service will send you response within this much time. That service will never go uh, uninterrupted, uh, never go interrupted. Okay, and that service will keep remaining uninterrupted. In case if that service, after all, that service runs at the top of the hardware, and in case if uh, hardware of it crashes, then this service offers you uh, uh, high availability. That service offers you fault tolerance. So even if it's one instance goes down, you know, the another instance which is always alive there, you know, will keep uh, giving you uninterrupted service. So that is what your pass offers. There is something called as a SaaS also. On the pass, you can get the services and you can use the services in your application. Okay. SaaS. It's an application which of which whole care is taken by your vendor, uh, cloud vendor. Users connect to and use the cloud-based applications over internet, for example, the Microsoft uh, Office 365, email and calendars, you know, uh, applications like Facebook, applications like WhatsApp, all those are available there on the cloud only uh, in the form of the SaaS. So SaaS represents the software Okay, what you can do or what control you have here that which software you want to deploy, how to con configure that software, what data that software is generating, on these things you have complete control. But what is the infrastructure that software is up and running, that is not under your control. That is the under control of the vendor. What software you want to run there, what Data. So to whom that uh, the, the, the data generated by that software will have an access to and how to configure that application. These three things you simply have to take care in SAAS. Otherwise, the rest of the things are taken care by your cloud, cloud vendor. So that's what I already have explained here as far as uh, cloud services, uh, service types are concerned. See here, shared responsibility. So it will give you more insight that, uh, you know, how many things are maintained by and managed by you and how many things or uh, which things are managed by your vendor. So if it is on premise, if it's a whole infrastructure on premise, 
then write from storage, networking, compute, virtual machines, or physical machines, operating system, runtime applications, data and access, everything you will have to manage. Everything you will have to manage. You will have to have a space for that. You will have to have appropriate um, uh, cooling systems and electricity alternate, uh, alternative electricity arrangements. You will have to have, uh, you know, a team to manage all these things. As far as infrastructure as a service is concerned, here you will see virtual machines, operating system, and application, all these things, uh, you know, your vendor will manage. Uh, sorry, you will have to manage. And these things, like uh, your operating system, uh, sorry, uh, compute, network, and storage, that will be offered by your provider. So provider offers you network facilities, storage facilities, and bare machines. On those machines, then you have to decide how to configure your operating system and what to deploy or what to install there. OK, so the color that uh, the green color is representing what all things you will have to manage. So here you can see burden on your shoulder is being reduced because some of your responsibility have been taken by uh, your vendor. As far as platform as a service is concerned, Many responsibilities are taken care by your vendor. OK, only your application you will have to manage. Only the uh, services your application is using, and those services you will have to configure. Only the data that you will have to manage. The rest of the things will be managed by your vendor. In software as a service, you simply have to you know, give the software to the uh, vendor and the infrastructure under which that uh, software will run. These things you will have to give to the vendor. Vendor will deploy that software, and that software starts offering you, uh, the, offering services to your um, uh, customer base. And uh, your cloud uh, provider is guaranteeing you that cloud provider will offer you those services 99.999 times up and working. Only data will be completely under your control. Your vendor will not have an access to the data. The configuration of the application will also be completely under you. There, your uh, vendor will not have any say uh, or any, any right to get an access to your data. So that's all about module one. Now I'm moving to module two, but before I move, let me just check with uh, you. Do you have any 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 query on this? Uh, no, Priyanka. All these the slides have been prepared from the MOC that uh, you know Chaitali will be sharing to all of you by end of the uh, session. So you will get more information from that MOC than you know what your I am delivering in the limited time. <coughs> So slides cannot be shared. These are the slides with the copyright of Microsoft. This will not be shared. Any other question, please? Please fill up MOC form. Those who all will fill up MOC form, they will get an access to the study material. So please fill up MOC form. So I think there is no question and you are giving me a green signal to go ahead. So <clears throat> module two. See here there is a world map appearing and in this world map. You can see. Uh, the locations of the data center all over the world. Here you can see legends, available region, announced region, and availability zone. Availability zone. Now what exactly availability zone is that also we will see. But all these are available regions. If you have a look at India, as of now there are three data centers in India. And besides all the data centers in India, 
there is a data center in Southeast Asia also. That is a nearest data center uh, to Indians, not within India, but outside India. So Azure offers more global regions than any other cloud provider with a 60% region, 60 plus regions. As of now, what I remember is 60, 65, 66 regions are there all over the uh, world within 140 countries all over the world. Two data centers have been pairing with each other. So uh, on the world map here you will see two data centers are pairing with each other. So in India also Central India data center and South India data center, they are pairing it with each other. Why are they being paired? That whenever any, uh, any instance is created in Central India data center, you know, uh, that service is also created in South India, so that for any reason, in case if that service goes down in Central India data center, in that uh, the service in South India data center will keep offering uninterrupted services. So that is called as a paired region. So paired region basically are for uh, making more availability of the services and making or increasing the availability of even data. At least 300 miles of separation between uh, region pairs, automatic repl replication for same service, automatic replication of same service. It means whenever you are uh, creating any service in Central India, you know, at the same time, Okay, it will create a same service in the uh, South India. Okay, and uh, prioritize region recovery in the event of the outage. In case if any outage happens, the very first uh, priority is given to the data center, uh, which is paired. Okay, so here in India, you will realize that there are three data centers out of which two data centers do have you know, pairing. The West India data center is not yet paired. So definitely they are expecting one more uh, you know, data center uh, to be created in India, maybe in North India, and that will be paired with the West India. So these regions are paired. So here you can see India South has been paired with India Central. Yes, and this is basically to increase the availability. There are a couple of other availability options. Whenever you create any service within a data center, there are three instances of that service created within the same data center. Three instances. So whenever I'm creating it in West uh, Central India, which is in Pune, okay, it will create a three instances there. These three instances are, you know, uh, uh, what is a fault tolerant. And they are, uh, you know, uh, 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 within different update domains, and they are within different fault domains also. So thereby, within the data center, in case if there is an electricity outage in one of the racks, you know, still that service is up and running in another rack. So that data center will not, uh, you know, cry that it doesn't, uh, it cannot make that service uh, available. It, it cannot cry that way because that service is available in another rack at the same time, which starts offering uh, that service to provides or uh, to provide uninterrupted kind of services. OK, there is something called as a availability zones also. Availability zone is what that in one data center or in one region. Like, you know, a Pune or like uh, Central India. This is a region. Central India is a region. In Central India region, there are two, sorry, three data centers. In Pune, there are three data centers. These three data centers maybe are existing in same premises, in same geographical location, but they are in different buildings. So in case if 
uh, electricity outage happens with one of the building, you know, steel services and data centers are up and running in another building. OK, so that is called as availability zone. Availability zone means creating three instances across three different data centers, but within the same region. So in Pune, there are three data centers and your services will be created in three data, data centers. In case if you are choosing availability of your services as zone availability, then it will have to create three instances in three different data centers. It is not three instances. In every data center, three uh, instances. Thereby, in three data centers, there will be total nine instances. And that's why, you know, it increases cost also. So nothing comes free. So whenever it makes your application more uh, available, okay, it has to uh, levy more cost on you. What if not a data center, but whole region experiences some kind of outage? Pune, for example, experiences electricity outage. Okay, then it will stop, uh, you know, offering the services. And how then my Microsoft, in case if it's guaranteeing you 99.99 SLA, okay, how Microsoft will achieve it? There then you can go for region pairs. Region pairs means across the regions. So we already have said, uh, observed, uh, understood region pairs here. So three data centers here in Central India and three data centers there in uh, South India. So in case if data centers, all data centers in Pune goes, uh, go down, you know, still it will keep offering services from uh, South India data center. So try to see uh, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, feature they have introduced to provide you ultimate availability of your services and the data. Availability zone. I already have discussed to you about it. This is availability zone within uh, a region. There are three data centers. These data centers have been connected to each other with high uh, speed uh, blast cables. OK, and, and they are taking all the measures, you know, to uh, uh, provide very, very fast interaction among uh, these uh, data centers. So optic fiber cables uh, can be used to provide very high speed data transfer uh, transfer across these across these uh, data centers. <clears throat> Lot many resources are available on the cloud. There are virtual machines, storage accounts, virtual networks, Azure functions, SQL databases, app services, Cosmos services, Cosmos database services. Data breaks, HD insight, uh, cognitive services, not many services are available there. We will visit the portal and we will try to see all those services. Oh, whenever you want to work on the cloud, okay, you get a subscription. Within the subscription, okay, many teams can work on the same subscription. Different teams are, you know, working. Or, or doing a development for different projects. So all these teams are working, can work on the same subscription, but there it has been recommended that every team will should create their own uh, collection of the services, what they need. So for a project, in case if there is a need of around 15 services, okay, so that team who is needing all those 15 services, you know, they should create a collection of those services. So there is a need of the resource group. So resource group basically is a collection of the services. It is like a container which contains any references to other services. So resource group is a container to manage and aggregate resources in the single unit. Resources can exist in only one resource at uh, resource group. I mean to say that in case if you are creating one database, you cannot see that database uh, in two resource group. A service can go in one resource group only, but in one resource group, you can create multiple services. It is like a folder and file. Resource group represents resembles with a folder. 
which may have multiple files. Okay, and a file has to go into one folder. Specifically in Windows, a file cannot go uh, into two folders at a time. Means a single file object, you know, showing its appearances uh, appearance in two uh, folders. That is not possible in Windows. Similarly, in resource group, one resource can be in one resource group only. You cannot see it in multiple resource groups. So resource group is like a folder. There can be a number of resource group within the subscription. And you can design a resource group uh, for the project. So in case if there are five projects and five teams working, there will be five resource groups. Resource manager. Now this service. OK, uh, is a service which creates resources for you. So you ask the uh, cloud provider to provide you resource and resource manager will create a resource for you. So here you can see. Resource manager can create different types of data stores, web apps, virtual machines, service map, uh, and all other services. So who is going to create a service for you on the Azure? It is resource manager. How do you handle resource manager? So there are multiple options available through portal. Also, you create the service. So, uh, through the portal, when you create the service, these are these, those are nothing but orders to the resource manager only. So after you ask it to create the service, you know this resource manager comes into action and creates the resource for you. You can create a, a service through PowerShell, through CLI, through language SDKs, language SDKs. Okay. So there are many, many ways uh, available to you to create the service, but despite of having multiple ways internally, it's only resource manager who will be managing the service for you. Only resource manager will manage a service for you. So we will see how Azure portal works. I will show you how from portal or also you, from where you can get a cloud shell, how to do get a PowerShell, how to get a CLI, that also I will show you. There is something called as a management group inside which there can be multiple subscriptions. So one management group will have multiple subscriptions. So your company may represent a management group for the cloud. And inside that management group, there will be multiple subscriptions. So one subscription your company uh, may be uh, using for production environment and another subscription it may be using for DevOps and DevTool environment. Inside that, there may be resource groups and inside resource group, there may be a number of services. So thereby, you know, you will have to have resource group there. A service can never go in more than one resource groups and service can never stay without a resource. Group. Service must go in a resource group. It is mandatory for a service to get created within the resource group. So now it is time for us to visit the portal. OK, so. Anybody has any question by this time? Let me know, please. Hello. And also would like to know, are you able to, does it apply pricing when replicating resources in all racks of same data center? There are some uh, replications which are mandatory. Their price is included in the basic price of that service. For example, whenever I'm creating a storage within the data center or uh, yes, uh, within the region, okay, if it is a cent uh, central India region, it creates a three copies of that storage across three data centers in Pune. And it is mandatory. You cannot configure that it should create that storage in one data center only. It is going to create it in three data centers. 
that is its mandatory and minimum pricing minimum pricing whenever you are creating it if you select for zonal redundancy zonal redundancy then sorry sorry uh, let me correct myself when i am creating a storage at that time it does ask me do i want to create it in one data center or you know, uh, um, uh, it's a replication in other data centers so i can choose their single data center and in that single data center it is going to create three copies that is mandatory within the same data center you cannot choose whether should it create one copy or two copies it is going to create minimum three copies so cost of that storage is including those three cost of those three copies if you opt for zonal redundancy then within that data center okay not only it creates the three copies uh sorry uh, yes availability zone redundancy it also creates three copies in uh, respective data centers of the same region in central uh, india only it will create a copy in one data center and copies in other two data centers of central india region there then its a cost grows because it is offering you more availability and it has to create multiple instances so that it cost more how many data centers can be in a region at the most 3 as of now at the most 3 huh. and more is the availability obviously more cost uh, it incurs more is the availability so whenever it has to create multiple instances in other data centers it will cost you more that is also for sure anybody has any other question please go ahead chandra shekhar uh, hello ah uh, yes what is my understanding uh, now for this is that there are three level of redundancies which which are possible one i am adding the fourth one also okay. that is called as a geo redundancy geo redundancy ha ha uh, how does it benefit let me tell you consider that in that region you know there is a, some catastrophic happening and despite of multiple data centers that whole region goes in the outage then how the services in case if uh, services from that region are being accessed from us how us customers will get those services so there then they are offering you geo redundancy also in geo redundancy normally it creates a replication in far away part or far away data center from the data center which is in question so the uh, so the reason for this is that in case if for some catastrophic happenings uh, that data center or that region goes down you know still data should be preserved protected and intact uh, in the exactly opposite corner of the world okay Yeah, yeah. Got it. Going uh, <clears throat> ahead. Huh. Okay. So this is the portal. In this portal, you just observe. There are a couple of options here. Uh, I reached to this portal only after uh, appropriate authentication. So who am I? I can see from here who am I. Okay. Here. uh here are some of the settings so settings like uh, you know what should be the background color portal settings uh, directories and subscription appearances which theme you would like to go with 
OK, so language and region, default language and region, what you can what you want to set from here. OK, that also you can do from here. I have received a question. Let me check. OK, that uh, Chaitali will have to answer. Huh? We will check with her uh, maybe by end of the session. Acha, Chaitali answered quickly. That will be sharing on uh, YouTube, so Chaitali will share you the link. OK, there you will get a whole recording. Theme. Setting. Startup use, OK, so. Uh, portal specific, uh, you know, settings and subscription specific settings can be given from here. Here you will see different notifications. So when you start provisioning a resource, what is the status of provisioning? You can come to know from here. OK, from here you will get a cloud shell. I will come back to cloud shell a little later. Now this is a home page of the portal, Azure portal. OK, and here. It is a long list of resources I have created. OK, I got one another question perhaps. Uh, huh. OK, and here are a couple of uh, uh, you know services I am frequently visiting. If I want to see whole list of all services available here, I can click on this plus button. And see uh, to the left margin you will see categories. So here you will see categories and in the categories here you can see compute. So compute talks about different computing services like Kubernetes service, VMware, function app, virtual machine, here it is, virtual machine, so Debian machine, CentOS machine, Ubuntu machine, Windows machine, whatever machines you want. OK, so it offers you compute. Compute means CPUs and RAM. It offers you CPUs and RAM. Storages. Let me take you to storages. Ah, here it is. Storage account. Storage for backup. Stackage is also storage offering you very high latency, as a very low latency, extremely low latency. Blob storage on IOTs. Multiple storages are there. Multiple types of storages are there. If you go to the database categories, there you will see database for MySQL. This is MS SQL database. This is PostgreSQL database. Oracle database, SQL server. OK, SQL server database, MongoDB database, Cosmos DB database. Here it is Cosmos DB database. Lots of databases are there. You can choose all these are past services. Remember, all these are past services. And uh, in compute, I brought to your notice uh, some of the uh, IAAS services. See here, this virtual machine is IAAS service. It is a bare machine what it offers. All these are IAS services, they are offering you bare machine installed with a specific operating system, but rest of the things you will have to install. Web app is a platform where you can do deployment. It offers you web servers, web servers for different environments. So web app can be used to deploy Java application or .NET application or Python application. And web app offers you multiple types of servers also. So that is also a kind of uh, you know IES uh, service. For analytics, here you have a list of analytics services. AI and machine learning analytics. So in analytics, you will see Azure HD Insight, which is nothing but a Hadoop platform. Complete end-to-end -end Hadoop platform is available here. Besides that, there are special type of virtual machines you can see in analytics. This is data science virtual machine. 
how this virtual machine is different than a virtual machine you are getting through compute that in this virtual machine you know you get all necessary tools installed for data science so getting a bare virtual machine of iaa service and then spending a day to install different softwares okay is much time consuming instead you can go for this data science virtual machine this machine gets created maybe in 5 to 10 minutes at the most okay and there you get everything installed or most of the things installed that is suitable for analytics in ai and machine learning here you can see nvidia uh, pytorch okay here you can see nvidia gpu so cognitive services cognitive services computer vision these are basically to identify objects in the images or to do uh, translation of uh, audios or to read words from uh, uh, electricity bill or from banners or placards <clears throat> so that is for cognitive services lots of services are available if you want to quickly search for them so that is also possible here you can search a specific uh, service storage account it is storage account no this is a storage but why are they calling it as a storage account they are calling it as a storage account because under a service you get different types of storages so here i am clicking on click on create here it is asking me for the resource group so i want to create a new one remember every service must go inside some group so i want to create a new one so i may be asking it to create z900 it is the resource group i already told you resource group is a kind of a container storage account name now here it is asking me to name it with all lower case letters so az 900 store chandra putting my name there this name must be unique all over the azure all over the azure it means if i am giving this name nobody in the other part of the world can give this name it must be unique all over the world all over the azure region okay let me select a nearest region maybe central india so oh, let me search for central india here it is in case if you are choosing a region as near to you as you can okay latency of interacting with the service there you know is always low if i am creating a region in us and i am here in pune or in mumbai there you know transferring my application request from mumbai to us will take a longer time and again it will take further long time for that service to respond back to me that's why you always prefer creating a service as much near uh, to you standard and premium standard cost less because it uses azure hard disk magnetic hard disk premium cost more because it uses uh, ssd which are always costly okay redundancy so here you can see multiple option <laughs> it's a non stop speaking no that's why locally redundant geo redundant zonal redundant geo zone redundant so multiple types of uh, you know availability options and redundancy options are available here okay so thereby when i click on review plus create in case if before i click on review plus create if i want to set some advanced options if i want to do some data protection encryption protection hello yes yes uh, uh, chandra sagar uh, can you describe it the geo redundant and other redundant uh, i already have described it locally redundant means within the data center it will have to create a three copies zone three redundant copies. okay three copies zone redundant means okay hmm. within 
three data centers of, with, of the region. It will create three copies each. Okay. And geo redundant means in addition to the number of copies what it has created within that zone, it will create three copies far away from our place. Uh, exactly opposite geological space. Uh, so that for any catastrophic happening here, our data will be fully protected and uh, you know managed there. So that is geo redundancy, which is most costly. And geo zone redundancy. Optimal data protection solution that includes offerings of both GRS and ZRS. So uh, yes, there is a one difference in GRS and uh, GZRS. In GZRS, it creates n number of copies in uh, zonal uh, region as well as in geo region. So if I have selected for it, how many total copies it will create? Total 12 copies it will create. How? So three copies in one data center, three copies yes. in another data oh. center in same zone, three copies in further next data center in same zone. OK, so there will be nine copies here and three copies in US maybe. That is geo, geo plus zone. Geo zone, yes. Yes, yes. Geo plus. At, le at least 12 copies. Huh. OK. Data protection can be set. Data encryption can be set. By default, any data that goes into storage is always encrypted. Anybody in case you get access, direct access to that storage, still he will not be able to uh, understand the data because it is always in encrypted form. But when you store the data, OK, it is stored uh, after due encryption on the disk. And whenever you want to see the data, it will decrypt and that data you will see. So encryption, decryption happens transparently there. But in case if you want to customize it, so that is also possible. For example, encryption approach, if you want to choose, that you can do through custom managed keys. So lots of things are possible here. So when I click on review plus create, I am putting this storage account for provisioning. Provisioning means actual storage account is created there. So it has validated all the fields given. I'm clicking on create. And within next two, three minutes, it will create that storage account. So here you can see the, the matter is in deployment phase. Within next two, three minutes, it will create it. Any, any question if I have got? MOC activation form. Chaitali has shared with you MOC activation form. Please fill it up and submit it okay, without fail. Here is a notification and here you can see it is showing me the progress. The deployment is still in progress and see that resource has been made ready. I can go to that resource by clicking here or here. Same thing, huh? either I click here or here, it is same thing. So when I click on go to resource, blob service, when I click on blob service, okay, here is your container, uh, here is your storage account, okay. What are all different storage, uh, sorry, what are all different types of storage is available here, just see. It's a blob storage, it's a file service, it's a queue and it's a table. Okay, all these four types of services are important as far as examination is concerned. I just describe here two only. Blob service to store any kind of file there. Remember, this is not database service so that you can, uh, you know, refer uh, the data record by record. Here you have to refer the data by reading whole file. OK, so blob service offers you storage space for storing a file. It can be any kind of file. It can be even video files also. It can be image files uh, which you will be using to render on your web pages. So storage account may have you know, image files also. 
videos which uh, uh, are being played on your web pages, the audios which are being played on your web pages, all these things can go into blog service. File service. File service basically is for multiple machines to share the data. It has been designed to let multiple virtual machines to share the data. So one virtual machine may uh, keep a file on file share for another virtual machine to read. So one virtual machine is running one application, another virtual machine is, re, uh, is running another application. OK, and there is some file share to happen. You know that can be done either through share drive or you can prefer going with file service. Queue service and table service. I am uh, queue service specifically. I am leading you to explore table service is a key value pair storage. It is very fast in uh, reading and writing. So whenever you are receiving the data, maybe from IoT devices or from logs of the server, you know, you can select a table service to record that data in the form of the key value pairs. Have I received any message? Let me check. Yes. Will every write operation effect to all the copies that were cre uh, created? Yes. And see, whenever the writing is being done in one instance, synchronously it will be done in rest of the inter instances within the same zone. Within same zone, those updates happen synchronously. Beyond the zone means geo uh, replication. You know, it may do asynchronously, but within the zone it does each and every updation synchronously. <coughs> OK. So that's all about uh, storage account. OK, whenever I am. Uh, I want to uh, say within this storage account, I have to create a file system. So here is a uh, button available uh, to create a file system. Every file has to go within some file system. They are calling it as a container. So when I click on this container, the name can be maybe data. And I am clicking on create. <coughs> so here is a container. I am clicking on the container. Container may resemble uh, to the folder. Say. OK, so I am clicking on the container and here I can upload any file. So when I click on upload, it does ask me to browse for the file. And I may be selecting some file. Maybe this file I am selecting. And I am uploading it. So this is one CSV file which I am uploading. Now for this file, one more thing you will observe that there is access tier, hot, cold, and archive. There are three access tiers, hot, cold, and archive. <clears throat> hot, cold, Archive. Archive basically is for backups. Okay, it is cheapest. Cheapest also. But it is not fast to access. So what you have to do is if you want to restore archive data back to cold or hot. There you have to do something called as a rehydration. Rehydration. Rehydration may take around 15 hours to complete. So getting data from archive to hot or cold is always time consuming. And it is not quickly happening. OK, what are a hot and cold? If whenever you want to access the data, whenever you are working on the data, at that time always try to keep data in the heart. You will keep only that data in the heart, which is. Uh, which your application is right now using. OK, so hot offers you <coughs> less cost on read writes. OK, cheaper. For read writes. OK, but it offer it uh, incurs more cost for storage. More cost for storage. 
हेलो चंद्र सागर एक्चुअली एक्सेस टी आर इज हॉट कूल एंड आर्काइव नॉट कोल्ड अच्छा कूल सॉरी सी डबल ओके ओके हाँ फॉर कूल इट कॉस्ट लेस फॉर स्टोरेज कॉस्ट लेस फॉर स्टोरेज ओके एंड कॉस्ट मोर फॉर रीड राइट so whenever you want to do frequent read write do not keep such a file in cool keep it in hot okay so cost less for storage cost more for uh, read write so whenever you want to use any file in your application okay within a fraction of a second if it is in the cool storage within a fraction of a second you can get it into hot or if you you have done with that file and you do not want to use it for some time convert that file from hot to <coughs> convert that file from hot to so this conversion is very fast okay but conversion from archive always takes a longer time so that would access tiers so that's how you know we have created one storage and we have uploaded the file okay uh and once it is done then you in, in your application okay that file you can access but if you go to blob storage and here if you see access keys this is one unique key it has generated uh, for anybody to first of all authenticate itself to access this storage so that key is to be used okay there are two keys here key 1 and key 2 here is a key a very big number okay which is unique this big number has to be used by the application which wants to access the data from this storage or by any other service if that service wants to access any data from the storage so access key can be used there is something called as a shared access signature also access key due to complete uh, in a privilege that whoever gets an access key that can upload new blobs can delete existing blobs and lot lot of things he can do but if you want to restrict that access then that is possible through shared access signature and through shared access signature you can you know define whether you want to offer read write delete list which privilege which permission you want to offer you can also define for how much duration you want that permission to be allow you and post that duration you know that uh, that privilege is uh, removed or is expired from which machine you want that permission to be given to which machine you want that permission to be given so many such granular access uh, parameters you can give through <coughs> shared access signature shared access signature is also a big number like access key only but shared as the sign number of the the big number of the shared access signature represents the different privileges okay that is not a possible in case of access key access key means giving all privileges i think i have received a question <coughs> why are there are two access keys had i designed azure i would have given three access keys because when i go to market to buy a lock the nautal lock or aligarh lock you know along with that lock i get three access keys and some sometimes four access keys what is the benefit that by mistake if i lost one you know i will have some alternative uh, arrangement with him or if i can share those keys with my family members here also to some services we may share one access key and to other services we may share other access key so that's why they are giving you multiple access keys can we load multiple files at a time yes whenever i was i was browsing for it at that time had i selected multiple files it would have uploaded all those files in one go so that is also possible <coughs> any other question please have i answered your questions let me know please
Hello. Let me check with Hermit and Ashok. Let me check with Purudhvi. You, you all have asked me the question, so let me check with you. Are you clear about your? Uh, are you clear about the answer? Yes, Suprakash. Want to say something? Yes, actually, I want to know how much actually uh, limitation for uh, file storage on Q and Blob. Yes, yes, that exact figure. This type, this type, uh, this type of limitation, I think. Yes, yes. Sir. How yes. much? Uh, ha, ha. See. These figures keep changing. As on today, what I remember mm -hmm. is maximum size is uh, 1000 GB. But it is soft limit. For some storage, if you want 10,000 GBs, yes, it is mm -hmm. possible. You allow to raise the token, they will increase the size for you. But by default, it is 1000 GB. That is one thing. And within that 1000 GB, then you will have to refer the documentation. How much space they are all allotting for file share and how much space they are allotting for uh, blob storage? Blob storage, yes. Uh -huh. so those figures also keep changing, so difficult to remember. But uh, hmm. by all those things are mentioned in the documentation. Okay. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Can we get pass for lab practice? Yes, yes. Azure free passes you can get. Azure free passes. OK, uh, within one month for one month, you get 12,000 Indian rupees credit of 12,000 Indian rupees. And within one month, you will have to you know, practice as much as you can. It's a free pass. So Chandrasekhar, is this the free account? What we, what uh, we can have for one month practice, or later also we have something for free which we can use for practice. Uh, it is free in the sense that for one month you will have to spend only two rupees, only two rupees because it deduct two rupees from your uh, you know credit card to validate it. That is one thing. Post one month, if you want to you know use it as a paid account that is possible okay but take my word azure will never deduct amount from your credit card without your consent they will send you the mail they will ask for your provision they will submit the bill to you in case if it is going beyond your credit limit okay they will uh, they will intimate to you that it is going beyond your credit limit are you uh, ready for you know paying the bill so because your free privilege has been expired and there if you say yes then they will deduct amount uh, from your credit card account but for every deduction they will first of all ask you without asking you without your permission they will never deduct amount i am asking this also from the reference of aws because in aws we get 12 months uh, free tier uh, account which we can create and within the limits we can use those services whatever they have given for the free quota beyond that we they are charging us but for azure it is only yeah. one, right yes yes see uh, there are uh, uh, in case if you compare aws with azure one prominent difference let me tell you within a free account of aws they offer you very few services and uh, you know, uh, analytics related services, they don't offer you in that. Okay. Here on Azure, you, they offer you every. Mr. Suresh, please go on the mute. On Azure, in the free account, they offer you 99% uh, services. Maybe a couple of services uh, are not being provided. But otherwise, I have seen every service I have used there. OK, that is one thing. Second important thing is even cognitive services are also are available there. Every service you can try in this free account. 
that is one thing. Second thing is in case if you are using service and one month is over, your service is retained there. You can still access your service, but you can still access your data. OK, but you, you, you will not get compute after one month. You will not be able to run that service. And that will happen for next one uh, so for one year in for next 11 months. So your services are retained for next one year. OK, so thereby, but anyway, you will not be able to create new service. So that's what they offer. They are offering. But compared to AWS uh, free and uh, Azure free, I have seen Azure free though is being offered for one month only. OK, is extremely useful. Because AWS offers very basic services. That is one thing. And second thing is whenever um, your credit is getting expired, AWS never, you know, uh, intimate you. They directly bill you. And then they sprinkle surprises on you that your bill is 6,000 and 9,000. Yeah. Okay. On that uh, front, I will say Azure is very safe and very communicative and trustworthy, reliable also. Okay, okay, so here we have created a storage account. Now let us go ahead. So. Different compute services are there. Virtual machine I already have shown to you. Container instances, Kubernetes services. OK, all those uh, compute services are also available. We can create a virtual machine. From local machine, we can connect to that virtual machine. We can connect to the virtual machine from local machine and we can manage uh, that machine uh, through RDP. Huh. OK. So let me quickly show you how can we create a virtual machine and how can we connect to it? So I do one thing. Uh, this particular storage, let me delete now. So this is one storage. I already have, you know, uh, explained you about the storage. Now I'm deleting it. So thereby I'm trying to show to you how can you delete it also? Name of the storage. So it is AZ 900 store. Chandra. Yes. So here I'm deleting the storage. And at the same time, let me start creating one simple virtual machine also. So clicking on plus create virtual machine. I'm clicking on create. Uh, virtual machine name. OK, so Chandra VM one virtual machine I want to create. Uh, region. Southeast Asia. Availability zone. No, I don't want to mention any availability zone. Security image. OK, I want to go with uh, uh, maybe uh, Windows Server Data Center Gen 2. Huh. OK, and here I want to select one simple basic size. Maybe two CPUs small uh, size virtual machine I want to create. Whenever I want, I will connect to it. You know, I have to submit the credentials. So some credentials I am giving here for connecting to it. Yes. Hmm. So I have I don't want delete with a uh, virtual machine. Yes, whenever I will delete it. Uh, premium SSD. No, I will go with H H HDD. It cost me very less. OK, hmm. so I don't want to go with SSD. Encryption type. What your ba uh, so basic encryption it will select default encryption it will select. And that's all what I want to give here. And then I can submit it for creation. OK, clicking on review plus create. 
and now it will start creating that virtual machine. Cost is very less. I have selected very basic machine, nine uh, rupees per hour. Okay, so clicking on credit. And now within next one or two minutes, it will make this machine ready. After it will take two, three minutes to, you know, uh, make the operating system uh, ready there. So within three, four minutes, it will make the machine ready. So that's how within very less time we can create the machine. If you see the ranges of the machine uh, hardware sizes, you will see lots of lots of options there. You can create machines with uh, uh, normal hardware. You can create machines with uh, GPU hardware. Lots of machines. You can create machines with uh, uh, large RAM. OK, you can create machines with uh, many, many CPUs. Lots of options are available. Yes, Akash. Come <clears throat> Here we have submitted how to create a virtual machine. We will try to connect to that virtual machine from my local machine also. Through the RDP, I will try to connect to it. Besides that, based on Docker and similar kind of environments, we have container instances, we have Kubernetes instances. So ready such services are available there. Different storages. So container storage, file storage, disk storages, different types of storages are also there. Azure files is what I already talked to you about sharing across multiple virtual uh, machines. OK, so blob storage we already have tried as far as. Why this is not vanishing? Cosmos database, this is no SQL database service available in the cloud. SQL database, this is RDBMS. RDBMS for MySQL, RDBMS for PostgreSQL. Lots of database services are also available there. Here you observe virtual machine is ready. I am clicking on go to resource. Virtual machine is ready. OK, I can stop that machine from here. As of now, that machine is already up and running. Now I want to connect to that machine through RDP. This is Windows machine, so I want to connect it through RDP. So while connecting it through RDP, I will have to download the RDP file. It will download that file into my local machine. So I'm clicking on RDP. Just a minute, somebody is at the doorstep. Let me just check. Hmm. Sorry. So I have downloaded RDP file. Now I have to click on that. So when I click, it will start the RDP uh, tool. So connect. I will have to submit the credentials. OK, and hereby it is connecting to that machine. Just. Hold there. This is the machine desktop now. That machine is still getting started. So from my local machine, I have connected to that machine.
And yes, after this machine is created, sorry, uh, started, you know, we can do installation, whatever be the installation we can do here. And we can make this machine ready. Now I'm controlling that machine remotely. Local server. I have to keep it off. So I am disabling security within browser so that we can download uh, the files. Ah, yes. So it is done. And now I can start the browser from here. Since my machine. Oh, here it is. Yes. Here it is. Internet Explorer. We can download whatever we want. We can upload whatever we want. OK, and we can start the installation here. So thereby you, know, you can connect to the virtual machine and you can work with it. Everything is has gone behind it. Unpin toolbar, huh? Yes. Everything is going behind it now. Huh? Yes. From here, I can disconnect this RDP. So I'm closing it from here. And you know, I can go to portal and I can shut down that machine. So from here. I can ask it to shut down, stop the machine, or even I can delete this machine. So first of all, I am stopping it. So it will stop the machine and thereafter I can delete it. The point is this way we can get the machine. Even we can create the databases also. And again, big databases also we get within fraction of minutes. So it is now. Module. Uh, three, but before that, I think it is the time for us to take a small break. OK, so uh, Chaitanya, are you there? Yes, sir. Hello, uh, yes, sir. Uh, can we go for the break now? Yeah, yeah. Huh? So 15 minute break. What do you suggest? Is it fine? Hey, hi, this is Kiran actually. Can you share that the link where I can connect from yeah. the teams because that chat is disabled for me and I don't know if I disconnect. So how can I join three again? Am I audible? Hello. Hello, yes. Yeah, is it possible to share the this team uh, meeting chart link? So if I disconnect, uh, I'll rejoin that meeting. No, no, you can join the same meeting. We will be continuing over here only. Yeah, but there is no rejoin option for me actually. Oh, OK, OK, we'll be sharing on. Great, thank you. Uh, Chaitali, uh, Akash, this site, good evening. Uh, just want to know uh, you will send the MOC code of ebook on my email. Yes, yes, on your email. ID. For a... I have received and, your and response I... and I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it. Don't worry. OK, so I will redeem it on the skill share. OK, yes. and, and and second thing, uh, do we get any one month subscription also for Azure Pass? Or no, no, we are or, not or providing the... that for now. OK, and and uh, the sir is uh, the sir is uh, uh, presenting the content in a very proper way in the PPT as well as. So can we get this content later on? So 
so that we will the remember it will because be provided to you on the youtube channel but the presentation won't be provided okay so you will share that link of youtube yes yes on the youtube channel yes the recording okay, will be provided to you okay ha uh, but please share that link because sir is explaining the concept very well okay okay sure sure fine thank you thank you Uh, one more thing I need to highlight it actually that chart is also visible from me. So that ah uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, one more thing I need to highlight it over here. So that chart is also visible from me. Okay. Is it still disable? Yeah, it's still disable for me. try to connect again with the same link because the chat box is open to all yeah but which link i need to open actually if i close this the same, then i can i don't think so i can re log in again you have any link which where we can click and open the teams using that link just a minute let me share yeah.
OK, I am back. Let me know, Chaitanya, when should I begin? So you can go ahead with the session. OK, OK. So welcome to the session post uh, break. <coughs> we were having a look at uh, module two. No, I think we just started with the module three. Hmm. OK, we created some of the services also. And we tried uh, to know how can we work with them from uh, portal. So here is a virtual machine what I have created. I have stopped it. If I want to delete it, you know, I can go here and I can uh, go inside the resource group and that virtual machine I can delete from here. What I can ask it to do is I want to delete all these uh, services. So I'm selecting using checkbox. I'm selecting all multiple services and I'm clicking on delete. I don't want to delete whole resource group, but all services inside it. So it is asking me for confirmation. <coughs> and yes, within next two, three minutes, it will delete all the services. So let us resume uh, uh, the presentation part from where we left it earlier, uh, left it before the break. Module three, Internet of Things. So IoT based services are there. IoT Central basically is a fully managed global IoT SaaS solution that make it easy to connect, monitor, manage all IoT assets. So there may be you know hundreds of sensors. All those sensors can be connected to IoT Central, and from IoT Central, you know we can monitor their health. We can monitor how. Uh, how with how much speed they are uh, sending their messages. So complete administration and management can be made possible through IoT Central. IoT Hub is a managed service hosted in the cloud. It is past service. Huh? IoT Central is a SaaS service. Act as a central message hub for bidirectional communication between IoT application and IoT devices. So. IoT Hub is also available as a service. Besides that, as your Sphere and other uh, few more, uh, you know, services are available, which can work with, uh, you know, IoT devices and stream analytics. So there is a Kafka, there is a Event Hub, there is a IoT Hub, there is a uh, Azure stream analytics services. Okay, lots of, you know, it's a very wide spectrum of services available, which are offering you end-to-end -end solution for you know, stream analytics. For big data and analytics. As I, I, I already told you, HD Insight uh, is a Hadoop platform, ready Hadoop platform. You know, creating a Hadoop cluster may take days, but here it takes just a couple of minutes and it offers you complete uh, Hadoop platform. Okay, implementing Hortonworks, uh, uh, Hadoop implementation. OK, and here you get complete Hadoop platform at the top of that Hadoop platform. If you want to work with Hive, if you want to work with HBase, if you want to work with uh, Spark. OK, all those, you know, uh, tools also can be installed. Very easily, very quickly installed. And uh, uh, you can build end-to-end -end batch processing pipeline as well as end-to-end -end -end stream analytics pipeline on this HD Insight Hadoop platform. Besides that, there is something called as Azure Databricks, which is enterprise level analytics development platform introduced by Databricks Incorporation. Okay, this platform has been built around Spark Engine. Spark Engine is extremely fast analytics processing engine. It runs at the top of Hadoop here it runs at the top of, in case of Databricks, it runs at the top of Databricks uh, uh, cluster, okay? But it doesn't uh, you know, run with the speed of the Hadoop. It runs with a hundred times more speed of the Hadoop. Very fast platform because 
Hadoop does its activities interacting rigorously with the disk, and Spark does its activities interacting rigorously with the RAM. It tries to manage big data processing within the RAM, and that's why it is extremely fast. In Synapse Analytics, they are providing you, uh, you know, unified services of data warehousing, serverless computing, sorry, serverless um, uh, relational database management system, then uh, uh, de designing or orchestrating data pipeline, then some uh, uh, HTAP like link services as well as, you know, uh, turbo speed spark, sorry, turbo speed, uh, speed analytics processing using Spark engine. So, and the Synapse Analytics also offers you Spark engine for analytics processing. So inside all of them, you get a Spark engine. And as on today, Spark has become a kind of a name, okay, without which doing analytics is almost impossible because there are, you know, competitive uh, products available. Just a minute, somebody's at the door. Here. Sorry. Huh? Okay, so for analytics, there are multiple options available. Okay, for AI, there is something called as Azure Machine Learning for doing a predictive analytics. There is a cognitive services. Cognitive services basically to identify objects from the images, from uh, photographs or from videos, or to do natural language processing like uh, uh, titles which are shown uh, in the uh, in the presentation like uh, to convert uh, somebody's speech immediately within some specific language okay so all those things are available in cognitive services as your bot services means designing the bot robots you know which are uh, you know, answering uh, your questions so all these are part of artificial intelligence and all these services are av available there on the cloud serverless computing Azure functions and Azure logic apps. In serverless computing means, you know, computing does has to happen uh, on the server only. But serverless computing means internally all those servers are managed and you know, heat of creating the servers and heat of you know, configuring them, that heat uh, doesn't come to you. Internally it manages and you even do not notice that there is a, uh, there are servers working. OK, and that's why they are calling it as a serverless compute because you don't see any server there. Although, you know, servers are working, all the servers are working there. So as your functions are there, as your logic apps are there. <laughs> Management tools available in Azure. See, we have seen how can we create any resource through portal, but otherwise, you know, uh, as your PowerShell is there, as your mobile app is there, uh, command line CLI is there, REST API is there, Cloud Shell is there as your uh, resource manager. There are many ways, uh, you know, to create uh, resources or to work with the resources uh, as your resources. So uh, from here, I can get something called as as your Cloud Shell. Here, I am getting. Uh, this is a Bash Shell. What I am getting. <clears throat> OK, if I want to go to PowerShell from here, I can go to PowerShell also. OK, and from here, then we can give the commands to create any service. For example, OK, let me search for PowerShell command. For creating. A resource group. So here is a command for creating a resource group. So we can give that command and we can create a resource group. So here it is. Copy it. Hmm. I can post that command here. Press that command here. I may have to uh, see here. Resource group name is already appearing. OK, where do I want to create it? That is also appearing. 
this command I submit. OK, and it will create a resource group. OK, so let us wait for a while and then let me go to my. So it has created a resource group. Huh? Here it is giving me the status. So here I am not creating it through the portal, but I am creating it through PowerShell. Now the PowerShell that we are using here is a browser based uh, cloud shell tool. But this PowerShell I can install in my local machine and from there also, you know, I can submit these commands. So here RG01. Uh, let me just check. Let me just refresh it here. See more. RG01, it has created this group. So this way, such type of PowerShell commands also can be given. Okay, PowerShell is a window based tool. Bash is non window OS based tool. So there is a separate set of, you know, uh, CLI commands. Everything we can make possible through PowerShell and CLI, what we can make possible through Portal. Okay, but this is another way to create the services. We can create a script file of this. In the portal, you know, it's a human intervention which is possible. But through uh, PowerShell or Bash, we can create a script file. And in case if we, for some project, we want to create some 10 resources, we can just list all 10 uh, commands into script file. And from here, we can ask it to run that file. Within one go, it will create 10 uh, different uh, resources. There is one more approach to this. We call it as an ARM template. In ARM template, and the configuration of these 10 resources is to be given in the form of the JSON. In the form of the JSON. And that JSON becomes your script file. You can run that JSON from here. And you know, all the 10 uh, uh, resources are created through ARM template. So that is also possible. So there are many ways possible. Uh, to create different resources. As your advisor analyzes deployed as your resources and makes recommendation based on best practices to optimize as your deployments. So from here I can search for as your ad advisor. OK, uh, <coughs> here. Advisor, here it is. So it is. Uh, scoring, uh, it is also giving me scoring how much best practices I am at following. OK, so I am still lacking in appropriate security, but otherwise, uh, you know, uh, I am uh, I have created a re uh, say different resources uh, in the optimal fashion, reliability, performance, so the rest of the things are really fine. But here it keeps advising me that I can do this thing, I can do that thing, you know, to improve the uh, implementation of best practices and to improve the performance of overall system. So that is as your advisor. So those services are also available and it keeps giving you different kinds of uh, you know recommendations also. So recommendations on high availability, recommendations on cost, recommendations on security, those things also you can see from here. So this is also a good service to know more about. Uh, you know what are all other services uh, you have created for your project? As your monitor maximizes availability and performance of application and services by collecting, analyzing, and acting on telemetry from cloud and on premises environment. So, uh, you know, performance and health of every service you can check from here. You can generate different alerts from here. You can, uh, you know, monitor uh, analytics of the logs. Okay, you can automate actions over there. So, that is also possible through. As your monitor, so I may be giving monitor, and here is a. Hmm. So different types of monitoring uh, are available. So network monitoring, virtual machine monitoring, container uh, monitoring, and application insight means whenever your application is running. Hello? 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 Hello, can you go on the mute, please? Application insights. 
means uh, how much resources your uh, running application is consuming. OK, so going inside the application and monitoring all its resources and its con uh, consumptions of the resources. So that is for that purpose, monitoring tool is also there. So a uh, couple of tools here we have seen as far as uh, um, uh, you know, uh, Azure is concerned. OK, and it is a time for us now to go for the security. This is module four. Half of the mark I have covered here, but I will say I have covered, you know, 70% of the curriculum uh, because the last three modules are, uh, you know, small and uh, uh, simple also. Module four talks about security tools and features. So there is something called as a security center. In case if you already are from the Azure background, you might have you know, understood the word security center. Now it has its name has been changed and its name is now Microsoft Defender. Its name is Microsoft Defender. Microsoft Defender is for cloud monitoring service that provides threat protection across both Azure and on-premise data centers. So Microsoft Defender may internally use a monitor, Azure monitor, okay, and may uh, club some of the services of manage, uh, Azure monitor along with some threat protection services to give you one dashboard provides a security recommendations, detect and block malware, analyze and identify potential attacks, and access to just in time access to control for the ports. <clears throat> Microsoft Defender is a uh, you know very important tool as far as security is concerned, and it it provides you a kind of a you know a umbrella for security management. It uh, it unifies other you know, security management features. Microsoft Sentinel, a security information and event management solution, SIEM. Security information and event management. If these things happens, then what to do? Okay, what measure to be taken? Whether somebody is to be immediately notified or whether some action is to be taken. So detection of threats, Collection of security data, rapid and automatic responses to the situations, okay, and investigate critical incidences while guided by AI. When it recognizes, uh, you know, something unexpected is happening, it keeps recording that data and analyzing that data, it draws its inference. So from all over. Um, as your uh, subscriptions and it keeps uh, uh, collecting that data. Data of the threat to the system. And then it uses that data to create alerts for you. And thereby it uh, makes you uh, to understand that your system is under threat. So Microsoft Sentinel, it is Microsoft Sentinel. Key Vault stores application secrets, so certificates, digital certificates, uh, uh, you know, symmetric and asymmetric keys, uh, username, password, all those things you can store in Key Vault. So Key Vault offers you additional layer of security. Okay, in case if these are, you know, uh, uh, say, <coughs> Um, these are uh, you know security related informations okay uh, somewhere you want to be preserved them okay so you don't want you know password to be uh, typed when somebody is uh, standing beside your arm okay at the, at such times you can go with uh, azure key vault so azure key vault is a key value pair OK, which is used to preserve all secrets. OK, and then you don't have to, you know, enter secret to the keyboard, any secrets of the keyboard. You simply have to, uh, you know, enter the tag that you associate with that secret and it accept a tag from you. Go to the key vault, picks up the secret and uses that secret for uh, authentication or authorization. So it is secret management. Uh, uh, service. Okay, so that's all about uh, uh, in this module, which talks uh, about some of the services of the uh, security. 
So important services here I am covering in your MOC. Uh, so uh, few more uh, topics are being covered here. I hope you will go through MOC and you know uh, uh, understand more about this particular service. Model five. Model five talks about identity, governance, privacy, and compliance. Compare authentication and authorization. Authentication talk about identifying a person who wants to do interaction. And once that person is in, uh, authenticated, then what kind of services should be uh, allowed to him? That is decided by authorization. So authorization decides the services to be allowed to uh, him. Determines an authenticated person's or services level of access. Yes, defines which data they can access, what they can do, whether a person has a read uh, privilege, whether he has a write privilege, whether he has administrative privilege. Those things are decided by authorization. For example, in the database, if you want to log into the database, it is authentication. And granting permission for your login of whether you should be able to create a table or whether you should be able to insert the data into the table or whether you are allowed to just do read of the information only. That is a part of the authorization. So authentication and authorization for authentication. You know, as your active directory is a service available there, which is you know offering you at least the features of Active Directory Domain Service. Active Directory Domain Service is a service available on premise offered by uh, Microsoft. So Microsoft's Active Directory Domain Service okay, has its cloud version on uh, Azure Cloud with the name Act Azure Active Directory. But Azure Active Directory offers you a lot many features. Okay, many important features. Uh, more than Active Directory Domain Service. So one of the features what it offers is multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication means whenever you want to uh, log into some service, even in the uh, to the portal also, whenever you want to log into the portal, it may accept uh, username password from you. In addition to that, it may accept biometric uh, say identity from you and that biometric identity may be accepted through your mobile. Through your smartphone. OK, and thereafter then it will provide you. Uh, say access and we call it as a multi factor because it may apply different levels of uh, uh, identity checking. Like login checking like face reading like uh, you know, thumb impression. OK, so many such kind of, uh, you know, uh, authentication uh, uh, methods it will adopt. OK, and thereby it will try to do authentication. As your active directory is Microsoft Azure cloud based identity and access management service. OK, so it allows you single sign on. Once you authenticate yourself, then it provides you access to many other services. It uh, allows you security of security related to your application, security related to business to business uh, interaction, business to customer interaction. It offers you device management also. So any shadow device it will not allow. It will allow only those devices which it knows in well in advance and it can you know, authenticate. OK, so authentication, so many such you know, features and uh, services are available through as your active directory. RBAC, RBAC is also possible uh, in Azure Active Directory uh, or in other uh, you know, services also. RBAC means role based access control. You have to declare you are user, so you have to declare your role, whether you are you know, administrator or whether you are contributor or whether you are. <coughs> a developer accordingly, your privilege, sorry, uh, privileges will be decided. Accordingly, authorization for you will be decided and that is our back role based access control. Your team lead will define. 
the privileges of access for you and within those privileges only you will be able to work uh, in the port uh, uh, with the hr fine grained access management segregate duties within the team and grant only the amount of access to user that they had uh, they need to perform their job enable access to the azure portal and controlling access resources so rbac services are also available resource lock now this is a really uh, area of concern that whenever you are providing access to your subscription to all the team members by mistake some resources may get deleted your one of the team members perhaps is not pretty sure he wants to delete one the resource but by mistake he ended up deleting ends up in deleting some other resource so there then being a administrator you can lock the resources for read only purpose or for cannot delete purpose so cannot delete means until and unless this lock is removed nobody will be able to uh, delete the resource read only means the person to whom this uh, or once you add this lock on that resource Okay, everybody will be able to read the data or re read the service, but nobody will be able to change the configuration or you know, do anything uh, uh, of the kind of updation with that resource. So these two types of locks are there. Once administrator add the lock, you know until and unless that lock is removed, even administrator also cannot override it. So administrator also will have to remove the lock first, and then. Do the administration over there. So protect your as a resource as your resources from accidental deletion or modifications. Manage locks at subscription resource group or individual resource level within as your portal. So to the individual resource also you can add the lock. Once you add the lock on the resource group, you know it becomes applicable to all the resources within that group. Okay. Tags, tags also tags are uh, you know a, a kind of a metadata which you assign to the resource. Logically organizes resources into one taxonomy. Okay, consist uh, of a name value pair. Okay, for example, there are uh, five projects, uh, uh, resources of five projects uh, uh, as of now up and running. Okay, out of them, for some. Production level resources of all the projects. You want to apply some policy. Production level resources of all the projects. You want to apply some policy. How will you identify out of you know, 50 resources which are production level resources? So there, whenever you are creating these resources, at that time only you may be assigning some tag to it. Production tag, for example. So identifying that tag. OK, you can apply some policy and that policy gets applied to all the resources. OK, which have been given tag as a production. So consist of name value pairs. So these are you know kind of a metadata on that uh, resource. It helps you to apply some policy. It helps you uh, for billing the uh, for billing information also. <coughs> Blueprint. This is another tool. Blueprint makes it possible for uh, development teams to rapidly build and stand up new environments. Development teams can quickly build trust through organizational compliance with a set of built in components in order to speed up development and delivery. OK, so Blueprint is a kind of a tool you know, through which all the security related uh, measures you can take, like assigning the roles, assigning the policies, assigning a resource manager templates, you know, assigning uh, uh, the configurations to resource group, everything you can make possible at being at one place. And one more advantage of Blueprint is you can even, you know, uh, uh, work with resources on non Azure clouds also. Non Azure clouds also. So you may be having some resources from Azure, some resources from AWS, and you want one common tool uh, to control, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, security of all these uh, resources. So Blueprint offers you one dashboard through which 
all types of resources, resources Azure and non Azure kind of resources also you can manage from one dashboard and that is the purpose of the blueprint. Cloud adoption framework. In case if you have on premise, uh, you know, systems up uh, system already working fine and your company wants to migrate it on the cloud because company is now day by day concerning about uh, the cost they are incurring um, on on premises uh, on premise uh, services. So in case if they want to migrate other things uh, under the cloud, then what are all best practices? What are all different steps to follow? What do you mean by strategy stage? What is the plan? What is ready? Migrate, innovate. Every kind of information you get in as your cloud. Uh, cloud adoption framework. So it is a uh, it uh, you know uh, documents best practices, tools, guidance, narratives of for strategies and outcomes. Here you will see some case studies also. So before you begin any migration, this is not a tool which will help you to do migration, but this is a tool which will help you to understand how to do migration. There are separate tools for migration. Separate tool for data migration, separate tool for compute migration. But cloud adoption framework helps you a lot in smoothly and easily adopting uh, the cloud framework. Compliance document offers comprehensive set of compliance offerings to help your organization comply with national, regional, and industry specific uh, requirements that govern the collection and use of the data. There are, you know, country specific compliances. There are domain specific compliances. So there are separate set of compliances for uh, health domain, separate set of compliances for PCI. I think it is called as for credit card industry. So there are different compliances. These compliances change country wise. These compliances change organization wise also. So maybe some compliances, uh, so maybe an organization has its own set of compliances. Country government may have own set of compliances. Industry may have set of compliances. OK, and whenever you are designing an application and you are making that application you know, allow you in the Internet domain, then you have to meet these compliances. So different compliance documentations you will see under this service. And you can bookmark them and interestingly when that document uh, gets changed it gets introduced with a new version you are notified that its new version is already uh, available and in this compliance document you can hold uh, a recent version also so this is again a service where you will see documentation only <coughs> You will see documentation only. Excuse me. Huh? Uh, sorry. Huh? Can you provide short notes or definition for Azure service, which is mostly used? Uh, uh, see, uh, there is a uh, enough detail discussion. Why I'm using the word enough detail discussion? Enough detail because you know in MOC, uh, sorry, in this Z900 curriculum is a kind of an overview of all these services. And uh, there is a enough detailed discussion in MOC that is being shared to you. I understand here I'm covering many, many services and it is really difficult, you know, for you. Excuse me.
Sorry. No? Uh, I would have provided you short notes also, uh, but the time is a limit for me. So within available time, you know, uh, difficult to uh, provide you short notes, but I will keep uh, your requirement in mind and maybe I will uh, prepare one document with the short notes uh, so that, you know, uh, that can be shared in such type of uh, deliveries. OK, I'm going to the last module now, which is a really small one. OK, and which talks about Azure pricing and life cycle. So there, there are a couple of very important points. Maybe in next 15 minutes, we will uh, complete visiting all these modules and thereafter, I will take you to a couple of questions. Thereby, you will also come to know what type of questions are asked in the examination. OK, and what care needs to be taken while uh, answering the question. Factors affecting the cost. Which factors uh, affect the cost? OK, so what is resource type? Now we have seen multiple resources. So there is a storage account and there is a database and there is a Synapse Analytics. Synapse Analytics basically is for doing analytics over relational database management system data, RDBMS data. OK, here I have taken three examples, storage account, the second example what I have taken is uh, uh, cognitive services and third is synapse analytics. Now out of these three examples, storage account is cheapest. Cognitive service, sorry, not co uh, yes, uh, uh, cognitive services, they are costliest. OK, and synapse analytics also is costly. So depending on what kind of service you are using, you know, cost, deep, uh, cost changes. And they have to have a different cost because down the line, the number of uh, you know, resources what that service is consuming, uh, those are different. For Synapse Analytics, you know, fairly large, large set of resources it has to consume. For Cognitive Services, these are all recent, uh, you know, technologies they are using. And that's why it is costly. The point is, resource type decides the cost. So the usage that a meter tracks and the number of meters associated with the resource depend on the resource type. Huh. Services, Azure usage rates and billing period can differ between Enterprise Web Direct and CSP. Enterprise Web Direct and CSP. These are your uh, the kind of agreements between Azure and you being a user or your company. So enterprise is a separate uh, you know, kind of agreement. Web direct is another kind of agreement and CSP is one more kind of agreement. OK, so depending on the agreement. Between two businesses, one is uh, Azure and another is your company, you know that uh, service cost also changes. OK, Azure guarantees you some SLA. OK, and more SLA as your guarantees you, more cost you have to uh, incur. Location. As your infrastructure is globally distributed and usage cost might vary between locations that offer Azure production services and resources. Virtual machine if you create in Pune and virtual machine if you create in US. Thereby you may find that virtual machine you created in Pune data center is cheaper compared to that is what you have created in US. But still you will prefer virtual machine in Pune. It is because the latency is very low because that server is very near to you. If you are from you know, India, that server is very near to you. On the other hand, if you try to create a virtual machine there in US, you know, it will cost you in two ways. One is it will offer you more latency. The responses will be slow because uh, US is far uh, away from here. And uh, you know, uh, even if you have a high internet speed, you know, somehow you know that distance will uh, add to the latency. 
uh, of uh, transferring the request and responses. That is one thing. Second thing is. Whenever data enters into the region, there perhaps, you know, cost is not incurred, but whenever. Data leaves the region, whenever a data comes outside region. That we call it as the ingesting. So ingesting doesn't cost the so doesn't uh, say add to the cost, but ingesting adds to the cost. So you are here in Mumbai, and you are trying to you know transfer heavy data uh, along uh, so to the virtual machine in US. Ingesting definitely definitely add to your cost, and thereby you will see uh, bill has been increased. But if you are in Mumbai and you have created, uh, you know, virtual machine in Mumbai data center, thereby you can save ingesting cost. If you are in Pune and you are ingesting data or uh, working, uh, sorry, creating a virtual machine there in Pune, then ingesting cost will be zero. So whenever you are accessing data well within the region, there there is no ingesting cost, but across the region there is always ingesting cost. Bandwidth, reserved instances, Azure hybrid use benefit. So some inbound data transfers. I, what I was talking is about bandwidth. Some inbound data transfers are free, such as data going, going into Azure data centers. For outbound data transfers, such as data going out of the Azure data center, pricing is based on zones. Whenever data is coming out of zone, then we just think uh, adds the uh, cost to your bill. Reserved instances. See, I want 10 virtual machines. But when I need those 10 virtual machines that at that time that data center says it doesn't have enough virtual machines. So in that case, what you may do is you may reserve 10 virtual machines well in advance. But whenever you are reserving, you know, it adds to your bill because you are reserving them. So that also adds to your cost, but that guarantees you that whenever you need those 10 machines, you will definitely get them. So that is reserved instances. So there are many factors which are affecting the uh, cost. And in case if you revisit these factors in your uh, uh, subscription, you can drastically reduce the cost. Sometimes, you know, unnecessarily resources are being utilized. OK, there you can drastically reduce the cost if you follow all these best practices. There is a pricing calculator also. Let me just show you pricing calculator. Azure pricing calculator. Uh, pricing calculator. Here you can uh, submit your needs and it will estimate the cost for you. So I may want to go with a storage account. View. OK, and here it is asking me. Just a minute. Here it is showing me for virtual machine also. I don't remember by mistake whether I have clicked on virtual machines. Let me delete it. So whatever resources I need for the project. You know, uh, as per my need, I may submit that information here. It is not working. OK, let me click on this. And here, let me add a storage account. Yes. Oh. OK. So blob storage. Region, region wise cost will change. So I may select for Central India. Central India. OK, and tier and other information when I give. OK, uh, redundancy is asking because that is again another factor which will affect the cost of the storage account. Uh, 
so I go with LRS. And uh, for 1000 GB, okay, uh, for write operations now it is adding to the cost and saving operations. Pay as you go or reserve all the uh, whole storage space for you. OK, save up to 38% pay as you go price with one year or three years. OK, so some some cost is incurred if you want to achieve more write speed. So that will add to your cost. OK, different container operations that will further add to your cost and you will have to estimate your uh, monthly or annual requirement and accordingly whenever you submit that requirement here. There you will see. Uh, total cost. From here you can submit the currency also. So I may submit Indian currency and here it is giving me monthly cost of the. Uh, some, uh, say of the storage account. So hereby if I want to add into this uh, estimation, if I want to add some virtual machine. That is also possible and it will then what what it will do. It will add into it storage and virtual machine both. So here is the cost of uh, storage and here is a cost of virtual machine. So hereby you will get total cost uh, estimate for your whole project. So you keep adding different services here and it will keep giving you total estimation. So that is the pricing calculator. It is also available as a free. OK, and uh, you can do just a Google search and uh, uh, you will get its link. Oh. Ownership calculator. So there you can do comparison of your on premise expenditure with expenditure on the cloud. And when, in which area you can save the cost and how it may it is you know, uh, uh, beneficial to you if you upload your uh, if you go uh, uh, or migrate your workload there on the cloud. So that URL also you can check. I am sharing that URL with you. OK, and I have got some questions. Can you provide short notes? Can we change the server location later? No, we cannot change the server location. OK, we can migrate to server. If I upload data from on premise to Azure within same zone, is it costly? What will be in reverse process? No, no. Migration does not cost you. In migration, what happens is your uh, on premise infrastructure contents are uploaded there on the Azure service. So there it doesn't cost you. When does it cost you that whenever your service is up and running? That adds to your cost. Whenever your service interacts with other services and your other services are across the zones, there it will cost. But otherwise, migration does not cost. Uh, and similar is the case with the reverse process. Yes. Okay, so I have shared you the link uh, to do uh, to calculate the ownership. Okay, that also you can try working with. Okay. Service level agreements. SLA is an agreement between Azure and your company. It is assurance by your Azure about the quality of the services. But after all, you know, it's a, a, a environment. Sometimes, you know, that environment, uh, you know, backstab you. That environment does not, you know, uh, come up to your expectations. There then, Azure offers you some complementary uh, to your losses. OK, and accordingly then like in case if it is a one year subscription and there is a loss at your side, so Azure may increase your subscription by three months. So service level agreement is what Azure guarantees you, but once in a while in case if it cannot maintain the SLA, OK, there it compensate uh, with your losses. So that is also something, some provision available. Just have a look at it. Performance targets are expressed as uptime and connectivity guarantee. So uh, here you observe if it is uh, locally redundant, then 
okay 99% uh, maybe it, sorry whenever it says 99% it means it is a downtime for seven months for seven hours. Whenever it says 99.9, .9, it is a downtime of 43 minutes only throughout the month. And whenever it is guaranteeing you 99.999%, .99%, it guarantees you only 26 uh, second of downtime. This chart is important. Uh, I remember there was a question on this chart also. Was a question, yes? a single question. So in case if you can remember, so they may give you, they do not expect downtime more than uh, 25 minutes. So they want their downtime to be less than 25 minutes. Okay, so which SLA option they should go with? So this is the SLA option they should go with, which will keep you know, downtime, downtime below 25 minutes. Okay. So uh, that's all uh, as far as you know, covering all six modules are concerned. Let me just check any question I have received. OK, we'll uh, expect a couple of questions from you before I go um, uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, taking you to a couple of questions on the line of you know, questions asked in the examination. How can we migrate local MySQL database to Azure cloud environment? Uh, see. We have one database migration service available. That is a desktop service to be installed on your local machine. Oh, so many tabs I have opened. Just a minute. Hmm. Data database, sorry, data migration uh, service is available. What this service does is that it takes uh, input from local machine, which database you want to upload, something like that. It check the compatibility of the database in local machine with the database on the cloud. And in case if it finds some discrepancies in the con compatibility, there it alerts you. But if it realizes that there is no discrepancy and even if it migrates the whole data, okay, from local machine onto the cloud, all the features will be available there on the cloud also. Then it can migrate whole thing on the cloud. There are two approaches online and offline. You know, if you go into the details of data migration assistant, okay, there you will come to know lots of things, but very easy way is available to do the migration of the data. Yes. Yes, Satish. Is it clear? Anybody has any other question? Please go ahead. Which REST API can we use to fetch stored files in a storage account? See, they are giving you management REST API for Azure. OK, and so, so REST API, if they are giving you REST API, they are assuring you that that REST API you can invoke using any of the languages. So REST API, OK. There are two types of API, language API and REST API. Huh? Language API. OK, it is available for Java.net, Java.net, Node.js, Python, and couple of other languages. OK, here you have to write the commands. And down the line, those commands will do REST interaction with the Azure Cloud. So you may write a command to create the resource, to delete the resource, to update the resource, to access the resource. OK, to upload the data to the resource. Every kind of command is available there. So this API, if you use, then you have to be good in that language. But the language that you are working, like say Scala, if you are developing uh, application in Scala and you want to do interaction uh, with Azure Cloud through Scala, and language API is not available for Scala, there what you can do, 
Scala uh, REST interface you can use okay, to in, uh, in interact with the cloud API. So this REST interface is available in every language. It is available in every language. So any language can use that REST interface to interact with the cloud. Uh, have I uh, asked, sorry, answered this question, Satish? Have I answered the question, uh, Satish? Was was this your question? <coughs> Hello? Huh, okay. Can we move resource one to another subscription? Across the subscription, you mean to say? The, the such provision was not there earlier. Okay, but I'm not pretty sure because you know there are some of the new introductions uh, into Azure. Like, uh, you know, though I told you that resource cannot be, you know, uh, migrated across the regions, but I remember somewhere at the back of the mind, yes, this this feature for some services they have introduced recently, but that you know you have to get confirm about it. You have to get confirm about it. Okay, recently they have added some of the features. Okay. Any other question, please? Otherwise, we will go for question answer. OK. I have got some question. Please check. Let me check. I found a session very useful, but I missed most of it. If you have missed most of it, Sudhir, I doubt your, about your opinion that whether it is very useful. <laughs> Are you going to schedule more on uh, Meetup? That we will have to check with the Chaitali. Okay, and Chaitali is the authority. If she will decide whether to organize it for us or not, I am always available there. <coughs> so we will request Chaitali to let us know uh, schedule. Huh? By end of the session, uh, we will go back to her. Question one. I want you to read the question carefully. You are tasked with deploying Azure virtual machine for your company. You need to make use of appropriate cloud deployment solution. You should make use of software as a service. So see here, you are tasked with deploying Azure virtual machine. You want to deploy a virtual machine. What are all services available? IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. SaaS for deploying software. PaaS for deploying service like database service, Databricks service, storage service, and IaaS basically for virtual machine. So the answer to this question is no. OK, but I think in the meantime, I have got one more question. Yes, your answer is correct. Uh, OK. So answer is B, no. Okay. How do I? Let me just do one thing. Let me dynamic set this taskbar. Lock the taskbar off. Huh. Huh. Yes, answer is no. Next question. Just observe, write down corner for the answer. Huh? Whether PAS will meet the goal? Again, answer is no. Only IAS will meet the goal. So answer is no here. 
Next question. Whether IAS will meet the goal? Yes. So see, in question number one to three, most of the matter is same. Only last line is changing. Okay. So here you observe, you make use of infrastructure as a service. Rest of the things are same. So just observe, I am going back now. So for PAS, observe, first two lines are same. Fourth line is same. Only there is a change in the third line. So in case if you recognize this, okay, be uh, you know, uh, uh, alert about it. In that case, you don't have to you know uh, read the whole question. Thereby, you can save your time. Okay, and uh, uh, thereby you can directly jump to the third question to check uh, or to arrive to the correct answer. So here, I is the correct answer. Question four. बाद में कॉल करता हूं आई मीन सेशन योर कंपनी इज प्लानिंग टू माइग्रेट ऑल देयर वर्चुअल मशीन टू एज योर पे एज यू गो सब्सक्रिप्शन वर्चुअल मशीन आर करंटली सी वी वॉन्ट टू माइग्रेट वर्चुअल मशीन ऑन द एज योर ऑन प्रिमाइस ऑल दीज वर्चुअल मशीन आर होस्टेड ऑन हाइपर व्ही एंड फ्रॉम हाइपर व्ही we want to uh, you know migrate to virtual machines on azure you are required to make sure that intended data uh, sorry azure solution uses correct expenditure model you should consider recommend so here one point you please note azure pay as you go subscription azure pay as you go subscription so you know whenever you read the question it is very important to understand some keywords and that's why okay just to read the question uh, to understand it first and then go back to the keywords that is very important here you know they may be narrating long story which is not important what is important is pay as you go that is something important so elastic expenditure model elastic expenditure model Okay, uh, it doesn't talk about pay as you go, but it talks about uh, you know scalability. Whenever you need more resources, it should pool the resources, and whenever you don't need the resources, it will you know, shred up those uh, resources. Okay, so elastic expenditure model does not talk about pay as you go. It talks about scalability. I don't know what is elastic expenditure model, but that elastic word is giving me a kind of a sense. that it must be talking about scalability the point what i am trying to bring to your notice please try to understand sometimes you know some of the words you may not be familiar with so try to apply your logic and try to understand the meaning answer is no scalable expenditure model elastic expenditure and scalable expenditure only there is a change in the word and meaning is same rest of the matter is same pay as you go currently hosted on hyper v and you want to find out correct expenditure model so if elastic is no then scalable is also no so it is also no then let me go to the third question interestingly these questions are always consecutive and that's why when you read one question okay and you jump to the another question there you immediately realize that this is the repetition of the earlier question only one sentence is changing you can just uh, you know put your focus on that question so here you should uh, recommend the use of operational expenditure and operational expenditure talks about pay as you go capital expenditure talks about you know investing heavy at the beginning itself okay and operational expenditure talks about hiring these resources maybe from cloud and you know paying uh for their utilization only for the period we are utilizing them that is pay pay as you go answer is yes operating expenditures are ongoing cost of doing business consuming cloud service is in a pay as you go model could qualify as an operating expenditure 
OK, if you have any questions, see now my full screen is visible here and I cannot go back to check your questions. So, so maybe uh, I will go. I will cover up to ten, question 10 and then I will go back to check whether you have uh, uh, sent any message to me. Going ahead, question 7. You are asked, tasked with deploying a critical line of business application. Line of business applications are those applications. If they go down, they affect all other applications also, which will be installed on a virtual machine to Azure. So line of business applications are critical in the sense that any uh, uh, anything if goes wrong with them, you know, it affects whole uh, line of process. You are informed that application deployment strategy should allow for guaranteed availability of 99.99%. 99.99%, very high SLA we are expecting here. You need to make sure that strategy requires a little virtual machine and availability zones as possible. If you include two virtual machines and one availability zone in your strategy, remember, one availability zone and two machines. Does this solution meet the goal? It will not meet the goal. The reason, let me tell you, your SLA will be more than 99.9 if your uh, uh, say zones are or your reasons uh, 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 your instances of virtual machines are going beyond the region. Uh, be, uh, yes, beyond the region, beyond the availability zone. There you get more availability. What if one zone goes down? Pune zone, there are three data centers. And I remember uh, one month back, there was a complete outage in most of the part of the Maharashtra, including Pune. So that data center might have gone down. And that outage was of you know couple of hours. The battery backup may not sustain itself, and there is a time will come when that data center also you know has to shut down only because now it doesn't have sufficient uh, electricity to keep it up and running. So there then, you know, uh, SLA is lost. So with one availability zone, you can't get 99.99 SLA. If one availability zone goes down, everything goes down. What if we have one virtual machine, but two availability zones? That is impossible scenario. It is because we cannot have one multiple machine created across or created within two multiple zones. That is not possible. We have to have two uh, availability zones, one machine in one availability zone and another machine in another availability zone. So one machine with two availability zone, again, it is not going to work. No, one VM in two zones, not possible. You include minimum two virtual machines in each of the two availability zones and there only you can get 99.99 SLA. This is now correct answer. OK, so thereby you have to find out the correct answers from the question. Yes, guaranteed 99.9. Answer this. A platform as a service that hosts web apps in Azure provides full control of the operating system that hosts application. On the pass, you don't get full control of the OS. Remember, on the IaaS, you get full control of the uh, operating system. You can configure your operating system the way you want in IaaS, but in PaaS, you, get you don't get access to the operating system. You cannot configure operating system the way you want. It is because they already have configured operating system the way they want to run their pass service proper. And that's why they don't want to give the handle to you. So its answer is no. The platform as a service solution that hosts web app in Azure provides ability to scale the platform automatically. Yes, that is yes. 
So in PaaS, not only it offers you service, it offers you scalability of that service. It offers you availability of that service. All the time that service will be available. It offers you fault, uh, say fault tolerance. So that is benefit of PaaS. In IAS, you don't get availability. But in PaaS, you get availability by default. Backup and recovery also you get by default. In IAS, for that purpose, you have to do special arrangements to achieve backup and recovery. Those are major differences between IAS and PAS. An Azure platform as a service solution that hosts to web apps in Azure provides professional development services to continuously add features to custom, uh, custom applications. Let me show you the answers. Answers are no, yes, and yes. Let me go back to the messages or the questions you might have. New question whether you have posted. OK, can you please provide a practice link for exam? If any, uh, no, so, sorry, Vinay, uh, there is no official practice link uh, given by Microsoft. OK, and that's why I'm sorry to say uh, I cannot provide any such link. This is a session sponsored by Microsoft. OK, I have to abide by you know, rules and regulations uh, of Microsoft. But if you do a search on the net, you will get n number of links. Some of them are really paid. Some of them are free. But my suggestion will be, you know, first of all, you uh, check with your uh, friends who might have, you know, registered themselves for some of the websites and then only decide which websites you uh, you will visit to practice for. All websites are having updated questions. Not all websites are reliable. OK, so you will have to check with your. Uh, friends. Which website they are using. Or they would have used. OK. 11th question. I have got another question. Let me just. Oh, OK. This is last question of the module one. Thereafter, I will cover some of the questions from module two. When you are implementing a software as a service solution, you are responsible for. For what you are responsible for what you are. Uh, vendor is responsible. OK, so I repeat again in SAS. Configuration and data. You have complete control upon. This is application configuration. And this is a data either submitted to the application or data generated by application. So configuration and data. On these two things, you have complete control. But one more question. Ah, yes, configuring. So configuring SAS solution is the correct answer here. Yes, I have got one more question. Configuring SAS, yes, correct. The fourth option, you are correct. OK, I do one thing now. I will have to jump a couple of uh, questions here. OK, uh, so that you know, I will I should be able to visit uh, all the modules by end of the session. Slide show. Yes, a couple of questions on module two. Here. Redundancy. Now see this question has many lines. Huh? Your company has data centers. In Los Angeles and New York, company has Microsoft Azure subscription. You are configuring two data centers as geo cluster. Now, one thing uh, let me bring to everybody's notice. Huh? In case if you are appearing for the examination from home, you cannot do even leap moments also. Proctor will keep monitoring your leap moments also, and he may be 
misunderstanding that somebody is there besides you who is hearing you and you are prompting for him so he may smell, smell some fishy there so he, you cannot do even leap moments also i have had some uh, not good experience i am habitual of you know looking here or there when i think so i read the question and then in order to you know receive say, arrive to the answer i see uh, i keep seeing somewhere else and that uh, proctor prompted me and he wanted me to look at the screen and screen only i turned my laptop and i showed to him wherever i am looking you know it's a window but no he wants me to look at the screen and screen only he want me not to do leap moments he wants uh, he wanted me not to even you know have my hand uh, over any part of the face for example you know i may be uh, keeping my hand or uh, i am giving a support to my face uh, having the hand over the cheek no he do not want my high, uh, hand even over the cheeks also anyway that was my experience i am sharing with you read the question you need to recommend an azure storage redundancy option now here what are all uh, see uh, what are all keywords just uh, uh, revisit the second sentence you are configuring two data centers as geo cluster site for a site resilience geo cluster site now what are all data storage requirements let us see data must be stored on multiple nodes so in geo structured yes it is possible data must be stored on nodes in the separate geographic location yes geo cluster covers that also data can be read from the secondary location read from the secondary location as well as from the primary location when primary location goes down you know secondary location should become automatically primary and it should keep you know offering me the data without any interruption and that is possible in option a geo redundant storage uh, sorry sorry in option b read only geo redundant storage in read only geo redundant storage when for some reason you know network get lost and uh, i'm not able to reach to the primary data center it immediately read out me to the secondary data center so answer is read only geo redundant storage why it is not geo redundant storage in geo redundant storage it maintains the copy in exactly opposite geographical location but in case if i lost the copy from the primary storage then uh, building that copy from the secondary storage is time consuming remember copy is retained in the geographically opposite location but you know using that copy to build the storage back takes a longer time that time can be of the 2 hours also that's why we will not choose here geo redundant storage in geo redundant storage if primary storage goes down you know, it may take a longer time to rebuild that copy from the secondary storage okay next question resource manager <clears throat> your company's infrastructure includes number of business units that each need a large number of various azure resources for everyday operation resources required by each business unit are identical you are required to sanction a strategy to create azure resources automatically you recommend azure api management service be included in strategy remember uh, for automatically building the resources you are required to sanction strategy to create resources automatically okay you may use resource manager or arm templates for that purpose okay api management is something different api management basically is a language api okay uh, api management service is a way to create and manage customer api for existing backend service 
it is not for Azure resources. It is for customer API to manage customer API for existing backend service. Okay. That's all. Huh. I have got some question. Let me just check. Okay, okay, you are answering it. Huh. So answer is no. In immediately next question, you will see rest of the things are same. Okay, only recommended uh, recommended management group be included in the strategy. Management group is a container for services. Uh, sorry, subscriptions. It is not for you know uh, creating resources automatically. It is for it is it works as a container for subscriptions. Resource group works as a container for your services, but neither management group nor resource group talks about automatically creating resources. OK, that's why answer no. Management groups are only containers. Using them cannot be used to provision the resources. As your resource management manager template can be included in the strategy. So this is the correct answer. Now, what is the resource manager template? Resource manager template is a JSON document. In this JSON document, in one single document, you can mention all 15 services, what your project are needing, what your project is needing, all 15 services in one document. You can do configuration of every service. Not only that, you can also mention the dependency. What service should it create first? What service should it create later? If there is a uh, say synapse analytics service, which needs a storage, so you want to create a storage first. So through the ARM document, you can tell it to create a storage first and then synapse analytics. The point what I want to bring to your notice is this JSON document is a single document through which n number of services can be created. n number of services can be created. And one more point would like to bring to your notice. That is again very important. 15 resources, if you try to create 15 resources through PowerPoint, and if it is taking, say, two hours to create resources, I challenge you, I bet on this, that through resource manager template, these 15 resources will be created in half an hour at the most in 45 minutes. Because Power, not PowerPoint, PowerShell, PowerShell create a resource one after another. It doesn't create resources, you know, uh, concurrently. And resource manager template creates the resources concurrently. Whenever you are giving uh, 15 resources to create through the resource manager template, you know, five to 10 resources, it will start provisioning in one go. And within 15 minutes, your five resources will be ready. And then, you know, other resources which are dependent on these first five resources, Thereafter, after 15 minutes, it will start creating those resources which are depending on earlier resources. So it does concurrent creation, and that's why creation of the resources through resource manager template is always faster. Resource manager template or JavaScript JSON objects huh, that define infrastructure and configuration of your project. Next. Uh, read it and tell me the answer. What is the answer of the first? Yes or no? I got some answer. Let me just check. OK, you are telling answer of the first is yes. Go to the second. To the second. It is B2S. It is not B2S. Huh? It is B2B. Answer for the second. 
yes yes no okay now let me show you the answer it is yes no yes if you create two virtual machines that use b2b uh, size sorry sorry it is not b2b huh? it is b2s b2s is a machine size each virtual machine will always generate same monthly cost no machines will generate different cost depending on in which region they have been created it is not mentioned whether they are being created in the same region so remember don't assume the thing that in this question they want to say that machines will be created in one region no machines in case if are created in another region in case if it is created in another region you know cost will be different third when azure machine is stopped you continue to pay storage cost associated to the virtual machine yes whenever you are creating a virtual machine it creates a cpu and ram it also dedicates one storage account so if you are shutting down the machine storage account keep incurring cost on if you delete that virtual machine then storage account will also be deleted but if you are stopping it then storage account will keep incurring cost on you so that's why answer is yes next you have an on premise network that contains several servers you plan to migrate all the servers to azure you need to recommend a solution to ensure that some of the servers are available if a single azure data center goes down or goes offline for extended period what is your what should you include in the recommendation if one server is going down and still you want your services to be uh, uh, you know uninterrupted then what you will provide here is it elasticity is it scalability is it low latency or is it fault tolerance so yes answer somebody has given answer as a okay and it is fault tolerance you are absolutely right availability region contains availability zones if you have a mission critical app that your customer require access to frequently you would want redundancy for your database meaning you would like to have up and running copies of service spread across different yet nearby availability zones and hence in the event of failure your azure should have fault tolerance capability azure availability zone should have fault tolerance capability fault tolerance capability capability what it does it creates a two databases it will keep offering you service from one database and when one database stops offering the services it immediately switch over to the another database that is called as a fault tolerance whenever any updation is happening in one database it is immediately done into another database also so whenever it switch switch it over to another database you will get get updated data this is the last question here in this module and then we will move to next module as your site recovery provides you no know, site recovery huh, for virtual machines virtual machines is iaas service site recovery provides now we did not have talk about site recovery okay it is a kind of a disaster recovery what it offers so i did show you answer because we did not discuss much on that disaster recovery your answer is correct yes okay so that's all for this module i go to the next module module 3 yeah go ahead i got some question let me just check disaster recovery yes yes, yes. correct
Okay, I got the answer. So let me just check. What is the question? Let me. Acha, for predictive analytics, okay, you should make use of Cosmos DB. No, Cosmos DB is a no SQL solution on Azure. No SQL solution on Azure. Cosmos DB is a you know queryable storage, which offers you four types of storages: document DB, columnar storage, graph storage, and table storage. Document DB is like a MongoDB. Columnar storage is like a Cassandra. Graph storage is like a Gremlin, and table storage is like key value pair. So Cosmos DB is not for predictive analytics. It is for uh, no as a storing no SQL data. Okay, I got some. Sir, huh? Yes. So no. Fully managed no SQL database for modern app development. Next question. You are required to deploy AI solution. You want to make sure that you are able to build, test, and deploy predictive analytics for the solution. AI solution or ML solution. Okay, you should make use of Azure Machine Learning Studio and answer is correct. Azure ML service offers you uh, predictive analytics. In Azure ML service, they are offering you uh, designing complete ML pipeline, end to end ML pipeline. Azure ML service when clubbed with DevOps, Azure DevOps, there then it offers you Azure ML Ops. So automating and op operationalizing ML data pipeline, a machine learning uh, model pipeline. Okay, so answer is yes. ML service offers grading and deploying ML and deep learning models. Now you may say that we haven't gone through all these things. Please note, we cannot go through everything. You have to carefully go, go through MOC. But here you observe, again I repeat, this is uh, certification based on fundamental knowledge. OK, so this is a fundamental knowledge only for what you know uh, ML service uh, is used. Machine learning studio is used. This is a fundamental knowledge. This is basically for predictive analysis. Next question. Read the question carefully. You have been informed by your superiors of the company's in uh, superior uh, company's intention to automate server deployment to Azure. There is, however, some concern that administrative cred credentials should be uncovered during this post process. Administrative credentials means username and password or digital certificate. Okay. So uh, in this migration. Uh, the migrating tool needs some administrative cred credentials. So from where your migrating tool will get those credentials? That is the question. Whether MFA is recommended? What is the MFA multi-factor authentication? Multi-factor authentication means not just relying for username and password being given by uh, a person, but to rely on his true identity through face reading or through Thumb impression, fingerprints. That is MFA. Biometric. It adds a layer of security over your uh, password authentication. Okay, so uncovering username and password uh, for your migration tool is not possible through MFA. MFA is basically for a human being who has you know biometric authentication. So answer is no. MFA adds an additional layer to the authentication process, but it doesn't keep your credential safe. Next question. What 
question is same. Only solution is they are changing. And instead of MFA, now they are suggesting whether key vault will work. What is the role of the key vault? The role of the key vault is to maintain the secrets, to maintain uh, you know, digital certificates, to maintain encryption keys, to maintain passwords. That is the role of the key vault. And for this purpose, key vault is the correct answer. Yes, key vault is the correct answer. Next question. I think this question got repeated. It got asked earlier also, huh? so I'm bypassing it. OK, next module. Yes. I will just cover two, three questions and thereafter we will undergo a question answer session or if you want to discuss something with the Chaitani, that also we will do. You are planning to migrate company to Azure. Migrate a company to Azure. Company has numerous divisions which will have an administrator in place to manage Azure resources used by their respective division. Division wise, you know, resources are to be uploaded. You want to make sure that Azure deployment you employ uh, allows for Azure to be segmented for divisions while keeping administrative effort to a minimum. You plan to make use of several uh, Azure Active Directories. Let me show you its answer. OK, answer is no. Instead, create users and groups. Only creating Azure Active Directory is not going to meet the purpose, but you will have to create users and their groups. Groups should be created division wise and inside that there will be users. So I'm going to the next question now. Huh. You are doing the migration. Uh, forest includes thousands of user accounts. Migration of you know users in the data uh, Azure uh, Active Directory. You are required to employ a strategy that reduces the effect on users once the planned migration has been completed. You re uh, plan to re uh, uh, require multi-factor authentication. No. Okay, multi-factor authentication is for human authentication. It is not for migration. So here, uh, you know, uh, we uh, we have gone through a couple of questions. If I am not wrong, we have gone through around 25 questions here. Uh, uh, so uh, here, uh, the idea of going through these questions to make you to realize what type of questions are asked. Above every question, there is a checkbox, which if you check, okay, it it will allow you to revisit those questions. So after you appear for 60 questions, then if you ask it to revisit the flagged questions, it will take you through all the flagged questions, and you can you know revisit them. You can rethink on them. You are in doubt. That's why you have flagged them. OK, and when you submit at last, you know, it will give you a submit button. When you submit. Uh, all the questions thereafter within 15 minutes, it generates a report for you and there within 15 minutes, you come to know whether. You know, what is your score? How is your performance module wise? How much questions you have correctly attempted in module one? How many questions you have correctly attempted in module one, in module two, in module three, and in all modules? So thereby at last it gives you a statistics. Which are your weak areas, which are your strong areas? So within next 10, 15 minutes, you come to know about it. And within two, three hours or within a day, you will see your score is uploaded to your Microsoft account. And there, you know, uh, your certificate, your badge, and everything gets uploaded into your Microsoft account. So within the day, you get authenticate document of your performance. So uh, that's all from my side. I try to take uh, to tell you how uh, examination is conducted, what are all different modules, how much is the weightage. 
I try to bring to your notice what cares are to be taken while appearing for the examination. I took an overview of all six modules. I took you uh, through around 25 uh, questions. OK, to give you a sense of uh, uh, what type of questions are asked in the examination. Again, to repeat, there are 50 to 60 questions asked in the examination and those you have to attempt within an hour or so. Total uh, passing percentage is uh, passing uh, score is 700 out of 1000. So that you will have to achieve at least. There is no negative marking, so you must attempt. 